Did you click the button? Yes. Thank you, dears, for clicking the button for me. Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and I'm playing Valhalla tonight. And as I've been normally doing, I am making cocktails to start and to end with Altrapra words. I will be doing so after every night of playing the game. And that's what I'm going to start with. I, I, I made myself a little bar. I stole my fiance's sewing table. No for the purpose. Correction. Yes. Yes. Is, no correction. She's behind the jobs. camera. There's my table for all my school jobs. Oh, yeah. That's mm -hmm. all over the bed. Yeah. I all can't right. sleep now. Yes, you can. No, I can't. And you have a bed for the purposes of sleeping. The bed has all of my junk on it. Okay, let's keep bickering for a bit. People like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> First off. Goodbye. Because I'm apologetic, I'd like to apologize for the lighting. Sunset had not yet occurred yet, so it's a little wonky, and I've got this big lines just staring into my face. Don't do the hair to don't do the hair thing. It looks can I, I can I can do my own hair. It looks so bad. Just fix your hair. Here. Ooh. 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 No, you need to fix your ooh. part. There's like ooh. twelve parts. There's like twelve on. parts. Oh my god. Apparently I didn't leave enough preparatory time to do my hair. Is it better now? Do yeah. I look pretty? No. But it's well, okay. It's gonna get worse when I put my headphones on. It's whatever. Oh, you ruined it. Anyway, let's see. I apologize for the light already. I'd like to apologize for the echo. I'm in an apartment. Sue me. 600 square feet, baby! Yeah, and I'd also like to apologize for the fact that I'm wearing a dark purple with black pants. It's probably a little clashy, but I'm just gonna just tuck that on the rug. Anyway, I'm gonna start off my evening with a cocktail, one that I have from the little black book that my mother gave to me when I first started making cocktails on my own. Interesting that on this page is a Mongolian mother cocktail, but that has literally dashes of everything in it. I'm not making that one, but it has dashes of vodka, gin, rum, tequila, triple sec, peach schnapps, amaretto, slow gin, southern comfort, 151 proof rum, grenadine, and cranberry and orange juice, and you garnish it all fancy fancy, but I don't, I think... I'm definitely missing... Ah, there's one thing I'm missing from that, and that's peach schnapps, so not tonight. But instead, what I am doing to start off with is monkey juice. And that contains ice, duh, dark rum, K, okay, Irish cream, and banana liqueur. And we just start in a, little in a little glass. It's nice and cute. So I've got a little glass here to do that, which is also nice and cute. Unlike myself, which can be not so nice at times, and I'd say cute is not the proper descriptor. To start things off with, I am going to start with dark rum, specifically Gosling's. Why? It's the only one I have. One and a half ounces of that. I'm going to throw that into my cocktail glass. See if I can get these things right. Unfortunately, there's no close-up or anything. I'm not that fancy yet. One and a half ounces of Gosling's Black Seal dark rum. And I'm just going to take these bottles and toss them onto the couch because... I'm in my living room area. Then I will add a half an ounce of Irish cream, which I will shake a bit first. It's been sitting in the fridge for quite, quite a while. I don't usually use Irish cream. That's gonna go in there. There's nothing citrusy about this drink. Otherwise, it might curdle the thing. So we'll do a half an ounce of that into my glass. This is naturally a built drink and technically it's stirred afterwards. Getting a little cloudy. No problem, getting a little cloudy. Throw that off to the side. Probably should put that back in the fridge, but that's a later problem. And in addition, we'll add half, half an ounce of banana liqueur. I tried to find creme de banane at the store. Could not find creme de banane at the store. Instead, I talked with the guy at the store for a bit, and he's like, well, we don't have creme de banane, but we've got 99 bananas. And I'm like, what is 99 bananas? And he's like, well, I don't really know what it is, but it's banana liqueur. I'm like, that's perfect. It calls for banana liqueur, not creme de banana. And technically... It is banana schnapps, as is everything else that 99 makes, apparently. And actually, me and the guy at the store discussed. We were like, what the heck even is a schnapp? And we Googled it. And the old Lord Google says a schnapp is basically just a spirit distilled from fruit. So, sounds like brandy to me, to be honest. But, alas, here we are. Let's see. Okay. We got that. And the final thing that I will do for the... Monkey juice, just to give a little stir. And uh, maybe a bigger stir, because that... Ugh, that cream is kind of settling toward the bottom a bit. 
That is disgusting. It kind of looks like you took a banana and mushed it up, mixed it with water, and that's what that looks like, honestly. And I'm a... I don't know. I've never had something that looks this nice before. This beautiful. This so reminiscent of a banana. Hmm. Jeez, that's intense. All right, it's a banana. It's it's banana. -y. Oh, goodness! If I ask for banana, that's what I get. This is monkey juice. One and a half ounces of dark rum, half an ounce of Irish cream, and half an ounce of banana liqueur. It smells like bananas, and it tastes like rum. Go figure. And then it's creamy. It's got the creaminess of a banana. It's got the taste of a banana. The Irish cream doesn't really shine very much there. It's mostly, I'd say it's mostly rum and banana, which is not an incredibly off flavor. Usually, if it didn't call for black rum specifically, I probably would have paired like a funky rum with this, like a plantation, uh, plantation rum, which I have for another cocktail because that's oftentimes got like banana notes to it and other things that are funky and tropical like coconut and things like that um but this one called for dark rum so i went with the dark approach because the book told me the little black book told me to and who am i to question the little black book and i put it in a tiny little cup little glass that's what i'll start off with i figure i'll start things off slowly i say slowly but i filled this up with like it's got alcohol in it actually come to think of it did I use the overproof rum by accident? No, I didn't. That's for later. And now that I've finished making my cocktail, I will go back to my game area. Please excuse me a moment. It will take me a quick moment to switch things up a bit as I remove things. Microphone. Pull up. Phone will be ah my microphone has turned back on lovely now is the time for me to switch the outer camera with this camera I don't have enough USB ports I can never have enough USB ports and then I shall switch back to the actual live screen in which case I'm back at my desk and I should put my headphones on so I can hear what's going on that's what we'll go with to recap monkey juice in my glass I got monkey juice in my glass. It's not very well lit over here. Can I fix that? Let's see. That's terrible looking. This is what we're gonna go with. Let's see, can I... Can I hear this game yet? I can hear this game. Perfect! And we'll continue on from there. If you stick around, I will make more cocktails. Let's get this show on the road. Load up... Whatever, whatever the last 2021 was, this always trips me up. That one, day number 11. And it's going to be a nice day indeed. The electricity bill will, bill will be sent out. I have $8,000, so there's really nothing to worry about. All right. Perfect. And we're just going to go to work, because I think I did everything last time. So let's get that started. Monkey juice hitting a little hard. Good evening. Let me turn this volume up a bit for myself. I hope it's loud enough for you folks. If it's not loud enough, let me know. If you have any thoughts, let me know. I like being talked to. Good evening. Ah, hey. How are you feeling? Little more soft and warm. Come again? You heard me. So, on a scale from steaming pile of shit to just sad, uh, where are you? A sad pile of shit. I still hate myself. I'm still sad as hell. I, I, how to put it, the noise stopped. I don't know if I explained myself. Sort of, kind of. So, how were things last night? Cozy, I must admit. I can't believe you paid Dorothy for that. Well, 
if you want to call it that, payments, I guess. Hmm? I called Dorothy to tell her what happened to you, and she was really concerned. She stuttered for a second, saying that she had the whole night to go, and she couldn't just leave for free. I asked her how much, and she said, enough to pay for the soda I'm having is fine. Oh. How did you get her number? I have contacts. Right. Anyways, Jill, if you need a second break, a drink, a hug, just let me know, you hear? Thanks. I'd make you the same offer, but I'm guessing hugs from me are the last thing you want. If you need a bartender, let me know, though. Nice to know. Anyways, we have work to do. Jukebox, it ain't broke. Don't fix it. Continuing onwards. Time to mix drinks and change lives. <laughs> nice to hear that again. Did you say something? Did I? I don't think I did. Hmm. Welcome to Valha- Oh, it's you guys. Hey, be more respectful. I brought my boss here. Aren't you a part-timer here or something? My other boss! You're talking to the great Nacho Tumbleweed Jr. Uh? Boss, I'm taking my break. I know what I said earlier, but you haven't even started yet. Shit. So, what brings you here today? I wanted to see the place my best soldier is working at. Soldier? Wait, aren't, aren't you the dog I served last Monday? Oh, it's you, Dana. Soldier, why didn't you tell me you were working for Dana? No, that's not Dana. That's just Jay. S so I'm guessing you're part of this whole Sira thing. Part of it? I founded it. Humans have the best intentions, but they just don't get us. So I decided to create a place where dogs can be dogs. Here we can take in any dog without a place in this world. We created our own heaven on earth. And do you take corgis only? Do I look like one of those seafair bitches? Of course not. I'd include other animals, but sadly I can only take care of those who are of the same species as I. Sad thing is, I'd take him more seriously, but it's a talking corgi with an eye patch. Will you get anything? I'm fine. What about you, boss? Manly stuff. You sure? Did I stutter? All right. Manly drink for the dog. Dog done want manly drink. And for manly drinks, I'm thinking fringe. It's not a no. I thought fringe was a manly drink. Let's go with gut punch, as I'm sure this monkey juice is doing to my body right now. One, two, three, four, five. Planner guide. I don't know. Do I want to see the dog drunk? I want to see the dog drunk. So that's what we're going with. I want to see the dog drunk. And we'll fill this bad boy up with carpentry. Aged and mixed and boop. It's a gut punch. Slam. Right to the gut of the dog. Oh, <laughs> maybe they don't like it. Yes, this is just what I wanted. Ah. Ah. Tastes worse than my own butt. Hey, you asked for it. This is a really nice place, you know. Uh, you picked a good place to work at, soldier. Thanks! Does he really get paid? Your efforts to keep Sira afloat will not go to waste. We'll make it better and better. I mean, we pretty much on the verge of closing. Can boss really afford that? We have more urgent matters at hand, though. Like the fact we don't have enough balls for everyone. Can't they just share the ones we have? You fool! Every dog has a right to have his own ball. If we can't provide even that, then what's the point of even trying? Wait. Don't tell me she doesn't give a fuck. And he's spending all her money like water. I, I mean, what with a bar, closing, all that. But many enjoyed the boxes more than they do the balls. That's a good point. What do you think is cheaper? A box of balls or a box of boxes? Are there boxes of boxes? Of course there are. How do you think they ship boxes? 
Tied together? Tied together? Oh, don't be silly. Unless she's paying him straight from her pockets. Boss is that kind of woman. This world is filled with all sorts of recursive madness, you know? Doctors consult doctors. Boxes come in boxes. Bottles come in bottles. Ooh, as expected from you, boss. Wait. That theory only works assuming she's actually paying him with money. For all I know, she might be paying with stakes. So tomorrow you're going to check for people selling boxes, you hear? Sir, yes, sir! Except that the boss, a good stake, is more valuable than money. Wait, what if they come with foil? Russell Strauss had to be taken to the vet because he ate up the foil a piece of cheese came in. Curses. You're right. We need a contingency plan. Besides, boss is not one to scam people, let alone a dog. I wonder if we can strike a deal with the vet those Seifer bastards have. She's always so nice with us. I know, her smile is so cute too. So it's better that we vet for a vet. Yes, put that on the list. Ah, Nacho! Oh yeah, I forgot she knew that dog. Are you staying for a while? I was just passing by, I've got some errands to run. Great, Gil can go with you. I can? You will. I'll still get paid for today, right? That depends on Nacho's evaluation. Alright, Greenhorn. Let's get going. <sighs> oh, I'm paying him anyways, by the way. Just wanted to mess around with him. No, that's not the problem here. Why make him do that? He looked like he needed to take a good break, and he's the kind to just not accept such a thing. But with Nacho, he'd have something to do, and he'd be away from the bar for a bit. When you put it that way. Anyway, I'm going back to my office. Your boss sure is nice. <laughs> Glad I'm working with her, too. Yeah. So, you having anything? Actually, I'm just going to go sit over there and be on standby. Await orders. Okay. Okay. Shit, I missed the chance to ask how or even if he gets paid with money. Man, I sure need to get wasted. I fail to see how getting wasted will make you feel better. Oh, Sheba! For fuck's sake, you piece of scrap. We just got out of the building the dogs. But this one has a Hawaiian shirt and sunglasses. Hey there, robot. And he talks. <sighs> Welcome to Valhalla. Hey, Jill. Get me a beer, will ya? Gotcha. Does do you want anything? Okay. Roll. Sir, yes, sir. So cute. He's fine. Just a beer, then. Friday after work isn't just a beer, though. It's the beer. Can't argue with that. Beer for Betty. Could make it big for the heck of it. Could. Oh, did I remember? One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mix, I think. Yeah, it's the big beer. I remembered. Here, let's make it special. Yeah! Cheers! Hey, Jill, do you like beer? The amount of beer cans in my apartment is becoming a problem, actually. I had this friend back in high school who made some pretty nice crafts with him. I I'm still in contact with him if you're interested. No, thanks. The last thing I need right now is more craft taking space. So how are things at Dogtown? Well, that Lara girl is stirring things up for better or for worse. For worse? She's, um, like a rabbit. An overtly politically correct rabbit. <laughs> rabbit? Never had a pet rabbit. They're nervous mess that gets startled all over the littlest of things. 
And this girl is on the constant lookout, scared of saying something that might irk someone. It doesn't have to be the person she's speaking with, even. It's no problem in the company, but the other day we went out together and- Holy shit! Poor girl can't speak properly! She pauses every sentence to make sure she doesn't say something offensive. She's a nice girl, and it's, it's sweet that she tries so hard to not offend anyone. But seriously, she tries too hard. You don't help, either. Hmm? You randomly yell, What did you say? Whenever she's within earshot distance. Yeah, well. It's just that she looks so cute and she's startled and... Like a rabbit. It raises up the question of whether she's really like that. Or, if you're the one making her wary, anything she says. Well, why don't we taste that? How? You go out with her. Why? To test if it's really me who makes her like that. Hmm. It's not like you can say no, you know. I mean, it's my honor that's on the line here. I want to prove you're only talking shit about me. Even if you were right, you have quite the fixation on that girl. She's fun. Fun how? She actually reacts when I tease her. Hmm. You take it in your stride, but she actually gets startled, squirms, and then gets uncomfortable. How is that any good? She's cute and her reactions are cute. But if you keep it up, she'll either leave or get used to you. You know, like me. Shit, you're right. I'll save my teasing for when the moment is just right then. No, no, that's not the problem. It is for me. And what are you doing here? What about the dog? He said he had to go out. By the way, he's, he said his name was... Say this, Laura girl. Do you guys get along? I, I wouldn't know. We get along as co-workers at the very least. What kind of girl is she, aside from the whole politically correct rabbit thing? Slow. She's the kind that does things so carefully that she does them really, really slowly. Really, really slowly. I can't deny that when she actually finishes stuff, she does a great job, but it's unnerving. She doesn't actually have to be with us in the building, though. She's more like a freelancer. Why is she there, then? Because she likes dogs. And that's why I insist that you two would make a fine couple. That's a really superficial statement. It's like saying you'd be fine with someone because you're both women. Okay. Bad example. May I say something? By all means. If that Laura girl is really as... bland as you claim her to be, wouldn't she be better off with a more, um... a more assertive person? Lilim. Uh, a more assertive partner? Yo, piece of scrap! She's totally calling you a pussy! Mm. She is right, though. I am, in fact, a pussy. Sharing interests and being compatible are totally different things. But then, you'd be underestimating the power of love. Whether you want to admit it or not, love changes people for better or for worse. Who knows? Maybe you'll become more assertive after spending time with her. Or she'll drive me nuts. I guess that's a possibility, too. Still, why are you so insistent on me and her getting together? Because she's like a cute rabbit, or so someone might try to eat her out there. It'd be a lot easier to keep her in my sight. So, in short, your motherly instincts arose because of Laura. Why not see if she likes you and you already tried to hit on her, didn't you? 
made me sound like some skirt chaser. She's not into girls. How did you find out? I asked her directly. Of course you did. She seemed, um, giddy afterwards, though. I heard her muttering something about meeting her first lesbian. It was... it was weird. Okay, enough lore for a night. That! Refrain from using any that's what you said last night jokes or variations thereof, please. Party pooper. Let's get a drink, then. Sounds good. I'll have a bloom light, please. Get me a fringe weaver. All right. Bloom light and a fringe weaver. The fringe weaver first because she asked for it first. Is that not a that's not a manly drink apparently? What is the fringe weaver? It's bubbly. It's bubbly, classy, and strong. Aha! It's a shit ton of alcohol. It's exactly what it is. Just going for that alcoholic kick this time. Aged. Give it a little mixin. Got that fringe weaver and the bloom light for a deal over there. Bloom light, blah blah bloom light. I want to get the little I'm drunk too. That's what we're in for. Attempting to pull out reactions of the denizens. And that's six, all aged, on the rocks, mixed. Got the bloom light and the fringe weaver. There you go. Here you go. I wonder why it's called a bloom light. Seems it was first developed at some video games event. The creator said something about making the attendees feel like their customers do. Said attendees were, of course, part of some big games company. Seems that company always used too much bloom lighting. So the bartender there literally made them drink all the bloom. So it's not called that because it glows in the dark? Not this one, no. Nah. Come to think of it, did you ever change because of a relationship, Jill? In more ways than one, I guess. Would you say for the better or for the worse? I guess for the better, I'm too thick-headed to develop any new bad habits. Although, thanks to my first boyfriend, I did pick up a very annoying habit of correcting people's grammar on the fly. Pretty annoying when I think back to it. So, you were one of those kinds of people. As for me, sometimes I think I become more... Eh, you know, what's... what's the word? Cynical, jaded, bitter... Tired of the crap this world and everyone in it throws on a daily basis? Hey, I'm just quoting you. But yeah, I think I became all that because of this one girlfriend I had in college. She got me into the whole activism thing in the first place. How is that bad? We'd all go and protest. We'd start all kinds of movements to see things changed. I really got into the whole thing. But whenever I wanted to get more serious, I'd find myself coming up against a wall. That wall is an analogy for the fact that not everyone was willing to go that far. I, I found out pretty fast that most of them were in the whole thing because of some shitty fad. And not because they actually believed in whatever movement they were championing. So I moved from group to group, only to find people who were in it because of a fad. And... When they were not in it because of a passing fad, they were of the dangerous, extremist kind. My tolerance for people's shit was greatly diminished after all that. So it wasn't so much the person you had a relationship with, but rather other people. The jukebox is getting crunk. Oh my god. That was a lot. Um, You seriously never thought about it that way? Ah... Uh, you need to stop putting the blame for what you do on past relationships. Whatever! Where's the other guy, by the way? He had to escort one of the dogs outside? Figures. 
Oh yeah, the one that was here asked if you were the nice vet lady that works in the Seafarer Tour Company, Toy Company. I suppose he's interested in talking to you or something? Why didn't he do it then? I don't know. You've been doing a few jobs on the side, have you not? The pay from dogs isn't enough to keep up with the mounting debts. I don't know how you do it. It's hard to believe dogs pay you at all. But this is coming from somebody working at a place that pays a dog for doing fuck all. Or at least I think we're paying him. I'm not completely certain that we do. Will you get anything else? Well, we're fine, but we have to get up early tomorrow, and by we, I really mean her. She got invited to a picnic, and I won't stand to hear another had-to-go-to-a-picnic-with-a-hangover story. Fine. Let's go, then. I wonder if I didn't serve her any alcohol, if she would have stuck around a little bit longer and talked more. See ya, Jill. Bye. Please come again. Man, you're such a party pooper. You'll be the party pooper tomorrow if you keep drinking. Boss, I'll take my break. Call me if someone comes. All right. That was quick. Quick break. What have we been? We've been a half hour. Only 20 minutes of gameplay. We're already on the first break. That's okay. This drink's a small one. Gotta keep going. It's starting to separate a little bit. The Irish cream and whatnot. It's not too bad. It's very alcoholic. It's got all the elks that people need. It's all the elks that people want. Let's save that. There we go. And, uh, man, yeah. get back into it. I saw no, I see no reason to stop. The momentum's continuing on, so I will keep with that when I can. No dogs in sight. Let's see. Rebase of the Titans. That was a lot. So let's change that to Neon Light Glows. Oh, wait a minute. I have to do that and then do that. Right. And that's... Oh, I have re-snowball twice. What about this one? That's good. I like that. Cool. We'll do with that. We're ready. Okay, then. Back to work. Welcome to the... Oh... Hey there, Alma. Hmm. 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 Um. Ha. Huh. She seems down. Maybe there's something I can give her to cheer her up? She likes classy drinks, but what she really likes... Classy is the brand Teeny. That's what she's really into. No, I'm on a drunk kick tonight, so... Let's also give her a big one. Two, three, four, five, and six. Aged and mixed. Rantini for you. Here you go. Hey! Hey! And this. It's on me. Drink. So you at least change your expression. Why not just say you're worried about me? You got the message anyway, didn't you? So, how is it? Brantini, so you do pay attention to what I ask for. You have quite the fixation with Brantinis. To be honest, they suit you. Hey, want to hear a silly story? Always. When I turned 21, my dad and I went to a bar to celebrate. Just him and I. He told me to dress well enough that he looked like my sugar daddy. It was a fun night. We pretended at times we were dating. I managed to blow off some steam about my mom. But the highlight was him ordering a Brantini for me. I've had plenty of drinks, gotten wasted many times since I was 15, but that drink was different. It wasn't about getting drunk. The drink itself was the pleasure. He too said they suited me somehow. Oh. Ever since that day, he's called me a Brantini girl from time to time. Dad sounds like a cool guy. You should meet him sometime. So why are you deflating? 
deflating. When I got sad and started sighing repeatedly, my grandpa would warn me that I would start deflating like an old tire if I kept it up. <laughs> so what is it? What is the news about people dressing in bunny suits after the whole Alice Rabbit boom? Nah, nah, that's old news. I mean, it is a problem, but such a thing would only annoy me. Say, Jill, how's your mood right now? I want to ruin it by blowing off all my stored steam. Silly Alma. I've been feeling like utter shit the last couple days, so... You can't make me feel worse. So go ahead. Unwind all your worries on me. Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, so... Remember my sister Diana? The one that separated from her husband and forgot her kids while fucking her way around or something? Perfect summary. I'll use it next time. I didn't tell you the whole story then. More specifically, that she threw her husband out after months of abuse. Oh. However, that woman is incapable of getting a job and maintaining herself. And I mean that. She never even thinks about selling some stuff or trying to earn her bread. She just expects a guy to do all that for her. I have no idea why she turned out like that. Both my mom and dad were hard workers. They even started a small shop to have something to do after retirement. Huh. So, what does this fully capable woman do a couple of weeks later? Why, bring her abusive husband back, of course. What? Yeah, and the guy spent a couple of days with her before leaving her again. He had a nice couple of hot, steamy nights, and then left. I... Uh, well... He reacted like my little brother and sister after hearing that. But the story doesn't end there. Oh, no. It does not end there. So she's broke and can't even get enough for a bus. Even though she'd probably be glad to sell her ass just to get some money. And it was up to me to pick her up. For the last couple of days, she left her kids with my parents. And being such sweet angels, they've made a mess of the whole place. Bernardo and Evan, Eva, Eva are actually staying with me a couple of days to give him some peace. Doesn't help that I never got along with Diana. So we're in the car, and she asks how her kids are. And of course, after all the built-up tension, I just exploded. First, I started ranting about how her kids are growing up seeing some messed up stuff. I start scolding her about not taking responsibility, about not taking proper care of her children. I tell her that she's no place to have all those escapades. And after all that, she just says, What the hell, you know? You don't have any kids. Yeah, you slutty skank. I don't have kids, but I'm not broke just because I refuse to take a job. I don't have kids, but I'm not leaving them in the first barely familiar house I find. I don't have kids, but I'm not letting that guy hit me on a regular basis back into my bed. I don't have kids, but I pretty much raised Ava and Bernardo, and they turned out pretty damn well. I don't have any kids, but I'm not a cheap whore! Ugh! Damn. I... I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. I love my family, and I put them above all else. But Diana is seriously pushing the boundaries of what I can allow. Any way I could help? You just did. Eh? I know who I'm dealing with. I'm not one to let stuff like that get to me. I'm still angry as hell though, and I couldn't just discuss this with any of my family members. I can't tell my mom, Your daughter is a slut! I just... Needed to get all this off my chest, you know? Well, from what I see, there's still a lot more to get off your chest. It's swollen as fuck. Nah, <laughs> all you see here is filled with love and dreams. Is everyone in your family as busty as you? The worst offender is my dad, actually. Kidding! Kidding. Huh. I guess the only one that didn't get the big boobs gene was Ava. 
She insists on getting surgery or genetic treatment, but I tell her she's fine the way she is. These can actually be more of a hassle than a blessing. And poor Bernardo, his breasts actually started growing when he was eight. I just hope I don't take too much from my mother's side of the family. My father's sisters still look quite young, but when menopause hit, my mom lost her looks rather quickly. Ugh. Any good genes you got from your family, Jill? Good enough skin and hair, I guess. There's a thing about a shrimp allergy, but so far I haven't had any problems with that. Oh, I see. Um, hmm. Hey, you know what worries me the most about the whole Diana situation? How your nephews are turning out? If she leaves them with my mom, they'll turn out better than her somehow. Actually, what worries me is, what if I end up like that too? How so? If I find a good man, and I settle down, what if it turns out shitty? What if I have a sudden burst where I want to live my life and end up like that? What if I have kids and I end up neglecting them because of all that? If you ask me, the fact that you're even worried about it is indication enough that you'll be fine. You think? I'm pretty sure. You said before that she pretty much married the guy after a couple of months, right? Yeah. No offense, but those are the kind of people who wouldn't even think about all that. Besides, if any guys ends up marrying, and if any guy ends up marrying you, it's because he passed your irrational standards. Hey, am I lying? No, but there are things best kept as unspoken truths. I wonder if I'll ever find a good guy. You will. You'll know when the time comes. I sure hope so. For now, the time has come to get another drink. What can I get you? Hmm. Get me something with ice, but alcoholic. Please. All right. She wants something cold with alcohol. That's that's my drink. Cold and with alcohol. I'm just going to start from B and just go for it. It's on the rocks. Mixed with alcohol. Bad touch. Nasty. Nasty, nasty, inappropriate. But somebody will appreciate it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's on the rocks and it's mixed. She gonna get drunk. Here you go. Thanks, I needed to cool down a bit. That's why I'm here. So you said you felt shitty the last couple of days. Why? I don't think too much about it. Oh, come on. You heard my problems. I want to help you too. Don't worry too much, really. Right, I almost forgot to tell you something. What is it? My boss is throwing a mega Christmas party this Sunday. You wanna come? Sure, something tells me this mega Christmas is gonna be a mess at my parents' home, so I'd rather avoid it. Are you guys getting chicken? Oh, I can get one. I'll grab a chicken for you guys. Have a little old chicken thing. Put my bracelet on, forgot to put it on. Hmm. To be honest, I wouldn't know. You can bring it if you want. I It won't go to waste. Gotcha. Hmm. Say, Jill, what's your favorite part of the chicken? Favorite part? The legs. I guess I like the legs the most. Really? I like breast better. Breast is a bit too simple, don't you think? Legs have a better texture. Maybe, but simple is usually better. Breast is easier to enjoy than legs, and a lot less messy. <laughs> you silly girls. Boss. You're there talking about breasts and legs when everyone knows the best parts are the wings. Boss, what's that? Spicy chicken wings! Where did you get spicy chicken wings? From a spicy chicken! You know, spicy chicken shop two blocks from here? Sorry, let me rephrase that. Why are you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? 
Why aren't you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Well, because, uh... Thought as much. Yo, Armitage! Alma? I know what I said. Will the chicken you're talking about be cooked already? You might need to heat it up, but it'd be cooked otherwise. Great! I expect you here Sunday at 8 p.m. Thanks. Anyway, I'll be back to my office. She left the bucket. Want some? Don't mind if I do. Oh! Mild spice. Nice. Weird. Maybe she got a mix-up order and that's why she left it here? She usually orders stronger stuff? I found buckets that make my throat itch just from being near them. Oh. Hmm. Say, Jill, what kind of guys do you like? That's a sudden question. Not too picky with guys. To be honest, I want them to be decent enough. Not jealous. Not aggressive. Responsible enough to keep a job. That's no good. Do you like them buff? What about tall? Hmm. No tattoos or piercings, I guess. Never liked either. What about you? I like them well-dressed. If they go out in iron shirts and well-coordinated clothes, they are sure to catch my eye. Some muscle is always fine, too, but sharply dressed males catch my attention faster. And yet you're still single. That's how I like my man. My potential husband, on the other hand, is another matter completely. I see. So, can you get me a drink here? The spicy wings turned out to be spicy. What do I get for you? Anything, as long as it helps with the spiciness of my mouth. Okay. Something to get over the spiciness of wings. I literally have no idea what to do for that. So let's... Let's see. Something that makes the mouth relax. Something to make the mouth relax. Teeth turn blue. That's not very relaxing. Champagne served in a cup, a bit of cola left. Knock the drunkenness out of you. That's not nothing. Not to make the spice out of you. Make your tongue feel velvety. Sleeping soundly, maybe. Ethylic alcohol with sugar. PG rated shows. Unbearable. Awesome. Punch made of innards. No. Leave your face red like the planet. No thermometer. We're harmed. No relation to the Hadron Cannon, the Bar Pianist Union, there's another one for the Piano Man Woman, Burn Hard on the Tongue, better not have a sore throat when drinking it for the Pyro Driver. That would get her very unfortunate. I'm going to do that if I can't find anything else. Sparkle, sweet, light, and fruity, girly as it gets. Like old chocolate milk with its good smell intact, like caramel too. That I think will do well because I think milk works best with spicy, spicy foods. And we're going to make it alcoholic. Why? Because I want to see... I want to see Alma drunk. Do, 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 do. Music got up to beat. That might, that might be good for me. On the rocks! Give it a blend! Shiga, 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 shiga! And stop! It's a sunshine cloud for you! Oh, zero. Mm -hmm. Guess I did it wrong. <coughs> Not the most pleasant thing. <coughs> But, but it helped. All right, so, <sighs> next question. What kind of girl do you like? <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. You first. Oh, she's drunk. She's a little drunk. Sorry, I don't swing that way. Sure, I have no qualms about saying a girl is cute or cool, but uh, nope, I prefer men in my bed. Now you. Shit, just, just calm down. Just calm down. I, I guess I like girls with light colored hair. Light colored hair? Yeah, you know, like redheads and such. What about white? Like your boss. You were just setting me up for that comment, weren't you? Sorry. Just that, when she got here with the bucket of wings, your eyes pretty much started sparkling. Your whole behavior transformed. You became giddy and cheerful all of a sudden. 
Hey, I can't blame you. She's pretty nice. I just felt like teasing you. <laughs> Sigh. So, light-colored hair. What about blondes? Do you like me? I, I guess. Let's say I'm into girls too, and I start hitting on you. Would you get along with it? Nice body. Pretty face. And in a good apartment. I'd never let you go. <laughs> okay then. Enough tangents. Why don't you tell me why you were feeling shitty these last days? What? Oh. <sighs> that. I told you not to think too much about it. And I told you I want to know. Come on, Jill. You've heard my problems so many times. Now I want to help you. Come on. Come here. Huh? I told you to sit here. Come on. Yeah, what? It's, come on. What are you... Is my face. All right, then. Now I'm the bartender and you're the client. Hardly. The bartending station only works with me. I see. Okay, then. I do... Wow! Wow! I move this here, click here, and yee Now it works for you, for me, and that dog in the Hawaiian shirt. Seizure warning. That was intense. <laughs> Why with him too? He's a dog! In a fucking Hawaiian shirt! <laughs> right. How did you even manage to- Oh, yeah. Hacker. Right. Now we've changed roles. You've been feeling shitty. Mind telling me why? It's a long story. I don't even know where to start. Start from the beginning. Okay, then. It's something that goes back to my college years. Whoa, that's taking it way back. Back in compulsory education, I never made too much of an effort, but I managed to get high grades. Even in PE, I managed to do well enough to always get perfect grades. And then, of course, when I got to college, shit started getting hard. I had this perfectionist streak that wouldn't let me fail anything. Burning my eyelashes studying, I eventually managed to keep up good grades. After about half of the career, I met a student teacher. Her name was Lenore. She helped me a lot with my studies. She even got me into stuff that gave more credits. I really liked her. And after some time, I found out she liked me too. Oh! Uh, we started going out. I met all of her family even, and... You want a drink? What? A drink. Around this time, there's usually a pause that makes you offer a drink to the client. There was no such pause. Please, I want to test this whole bartending in the face. <sighs> a sugar rush, then. You can't mess that up. Right. Jill asked for a sugar rush. Now, how did this thing work again? I have to click this button over here, searching by name. She says she wants a sugar rush, so I go to S. There's the sugar rush there. I need to click, let's see, aldehyde, powdered. I see aldehyde, and it's red. So one and two. Let's go with... The powder delta. Optional carmatrine. What does the optional mean? I could put some. This girl needs a little bit. So she's gonna get carmatrine up to the brim. Mixed there. Bam, for your sugar brush here. Thanks. How is it? Like I said, you can't mess up a sugar rush. I have this gut feeling that with your body, you'd make a better bartender than me. You're selling yourself too short. You're cute, you know? People don't go to bars for cuteness, though. You've obviously never been to a cat bar, then. Besides, my boobs can be a hassle when trying to move around this kind of stuff. So keep telling the story. 
Well, as the career went on and on, it got harder and harder. The last year and a half of it came nothing but study session after study session, investigations, my thesis. When the graduation ceremony came, I had to make a speech and suddenly, while reading said speech, I almost had a panic attack. Fear of public speaking. I realized I lost about a year and a half of my life. I tried to remember if I did anything fun at all. All I could remember was studying and investigating new topics. By the way, as a quick aside, story of my life. Gosh! I didn't even enjoy doing all of that. I was just standing there and the satisfaction of graduating was minimal. I realized I had only gone through the motions day after day, from high school to graduating. I felt like whole years of my life had slipped through my fingers. Like I never stopped to think if I enjoyed what I was doing. In fact, I, I never stopped. But at that point, I stopped and realized I need a breather or something. Did I even like that career? It was all terrifying as hell. I needed all my strength to not start running like a panic mess. Hmm. So a couple of months later, I get an offer to start working at this big research facility. Lenore was ecstatic. She was so proud of me back then. But I was just scared. That would be my job. I'd spend my life expanding on what I did during that year and a half. What if I had a sudden realization like the one I had at graduation, but when I turned 40? I didn't know what to do. I sure as hell wasn't taking that offer. I told Lenore, and she freaked out. She confessed that she was jealous because she never got such a chance. Things devolved pretty quickly. She said one too many things. I said one too many things. In the end, I just stormed out of her house. And I broke a vase in the process. After that, I never spoke to her again. Damn. I'm sorry, I... I suddenly feel bad for pushing you to tell me all that. Why are you feeling shitty about that after all this time, though? Unless you've been feeling shitty for years. I have. But it's not just because of that. Huh? The other day... Lenore's sister, Gabrielle, came to this bar. Apparently, Lenore died last week. Localized nanomachine rejection. A heart attack. Apparently she had it for a long time, but never told anyone. And coincidentally, it got worse after I left. And I just can't stop thinking about it. Wondering if me being there would have made a difference. And if it's true, she had that for a long time. Why, why didn't she tell me she was sick when we were together? Like, I don't know. I just feel like all kinds of failure. Chill. To make it worse, I also lashed out at Gabby. Yes, she was blaming me for her sister's death and all, but she's just a kid. For fuck's sake, she lost the sister who pretty much raised her on her own. And to top it all off, I suddenly can't remember what stopped me from apologizing. Pride, fear, stupid effort to leave the most awesome person I loved as a thing of the past. Who cares? I lost my chance to apologize to her forever. Truly, forever. I'm such a Piece of shit. A selfish piece of shit. <laughs> I honestly don't know what to say. I, I didn't expect the story to be this. I... Yo, boob tender. Y yes? Can you give me a big beer here? C coming right up. Big beer, big beer. What makes a beer big in this thing? Well, on the bright side, I already know. I needs me a beer. Jill needs herself a beer. 
This is welcome back, Alma. Click, click, click. Nice. And I need myself some more monkey juice. I'm almost done. Almost out of it. Big beer for Jill. Thanks. I need to remember to take care of the cans in my apartment. Do you drink lots of beer? One of the perks of the BTC issued liver implant is that I can drink lots of beer without getting too wasted. Ooh. Hey, Jill. What kind of girl was Lenore? Mm, uh, well, she was calm and smart. Back in college, I was too thick headed, got riled up easily. Stressed was my default state. So, just like you're behaving right now. Shut up, I was worse. I can't picture that. Don't, it's embarrassing. Anyway, she was always there, finding a way to cool me down. She was also able to hold conversations about pretty much any topic. One time, I saw her going from talking about video games to talking about sports. All that variety while still being a hardcore scientist. She would always push me into social interactions. If she saw me by myself, she would drag me with her. Watching people is fine, but talking to them is better, she would say. Lenore would always present me to her many acquaintances as the girl I don't mind cuddling with for hours. Man. I'm gonna miss her. After a point, I didn't even think about getting back into a relationship with her, but... She was such an awesome person, I just wanted to apologize. And now... <sighs> you know, in a cruel twist of irony, she's the one that made me pick up bartending. Oh! Back when I was thinking about what the heck do I do with my life, I remembered a night I spent in a club. She started talking about how the drinks were synthesized, the chemistry involved, reactions and all that. Everything sounded so fascinating. I remember saying that her talk made me want to start mixing drinks. She said, if everything else fails, why not take up bartending? Huh. Interesting. Are you okay? For some value of okay? Yeah. It's just... I wanted to thank you, Alma. Thank me. I guess I just needed someone to tell all of this to. We, you were the one. You volunteered yourself. You insisted on listening to me. You stood there listening to the whole thing from beginning to end. No, I might not be the most expressive person that I'm not one to spout love and fluffiness, but... I really like you. Maybe I'm just a bartender and you're just a client. I really appreciate your friendship, or at the very least, your patronage. I really enjoy working for you. Jill, are you dying? Shh, shut up! I'm trying to have a heart to heart here. Sorry, sorry, it's just. It's weird for you to get so. <laughs> sappy. Well, I just realized that the saddest thing is how I'll never be able to make amends. And it hurts, like fucking hell, you know? I never, I mean, never want to feel that way ever again. I don't want someone to suddenly exit my life and have my last memory of them involve something nasty. I don't want the lingering grief of having burned a bridge on a whim. I want to avoid that at any cost. If it means breaking character every once in a while, so be it. I let everyone know how I really feel about them. If I ever fight with them, I'll swallow my pride, muster all the courage I can, and be the one to apologize. I hate feeling like this. Hate it. I hate it. <laughs> That's a nice resolution. Maybe I'll be a copycat and do the same. All right, enough sappiness. Get back here. I'm on duty, you know. Fine. It's almost closing time anyways. It was fun while it lasted, though. Hey. Yeah? I mean it. 
you know, thanks for everything today. Silly Joe, you listen to my problems and I listen to yours. That's what friends are for, right? Right. I'll be leaving now. Oh, before I forget, did you ever talk about all this with your parents? They know the basics, but I haven't told them about Lenore's death yet. Why don't you do that sometime? I don't know, I just, I don't want to bother them with my problems. Don't be silly, they're your parents, they live to share your problems. To you try how to talk like this when, with them sometime, Lal. They'll really appreciate it. Anyway, I'm out. See you on Sunday. Take care. That alma girl sure is nice. Up, oh, boss. Did you did you hear any of that? Not all of it, but a good chunk at the very least. Your expression changed a lot already. It did. You look happier. That's always good. Anyway, let's call it a day. I expect an even brighter Jill tomorrow. Right. Oh, yeah, boss, about those chicken wings. Fucking idiots at the spicy chicken. Sorry, Dana. We won't have enough spices for your order until tomorrow, he said. Is that how they treat their regulars? I'm gonna call the manager. I'm gonna... Yeah. Boss? Total earnings, 28,350. Dolores drinks total 940. Mistakes, one. Probably with the... Spicy thing for Alma. Commission 25%. Today's payment 235. Tips 300. Flawless service bonus not granted. Cherish Titty Hacker. She's a good friend. 300. Two days total transfer 835. Total friends 9,328. That's pretty good. My account was charged. $8,000 as payment for the electrical bill. Have a nice day. Jill's power didn't get cut. This gives her peace of mind, and now she'll focus at work with no problem whatsoever. Have a nice day. All right, so what I am going to do in the meantime is I have finished my cocktail. It's another night. I'm going to switch to the other side, and it'll take me a little bit of a moment to do that. You will excuse me, and I'm actually going to do a quick break before I actually transfer over there, so I'm going to switch things and then go. So, let's do that. Plug things in over here. Plugs headphones in to charge. They don't have a very good charge. I'm going to switch to the swap screen over here. Actually, let's... Video's being cut off. Boop! To over there. Go over to the swap screen. Activate and activate. It's now streaming live from the other side. And I will do my break here. And I'll be back in just a moment. I think I am back once again. The stream computer crashed yet again. I don't know what's going on. I'm just trying to make a cocktail here. Play some video games. I'm going to try to continue doing this if I can. It says that I'm live again, so I'm going with it. Hey, you found my other peeler. Where was it? 
exactly where I put it. Where did you put it? <laughs> in this drawer. That's weird. I could not find it. Well, let's see if I have any more luck with this. This is turned the wrong direction. Weird. What do you mean it's turned the wrong direction? Turned the wrong direction. Weird. Oh, that know? was probably my fault. It weird. fell out, and then I just Oh, did you back. break it? You broke my peeler! It's oh, fine. You didn't about. break my peeler. You're fine. All right, let's try that. I honestly blame the lemon for this. It's a, it's a lemon that doesn't like to be convinced. Trying it. Eee, it's kind of working. It's kind of working. All right, that's as pfft, as good as a lemon twist that I'm gonna get. The piece of lemon. I prepared that in advance. Anyway, well, I'll try that again, but a little differently. Again, my sincerest apologies about the crashing and whatnot. Actually, I'm gonna check one more time to make sure it hasn't crashed yet again. It is not. It's still going. Perfect. I shall continue with our oars along the golden afternoon trip in Wonderland. The next thing that I will do is make the lemon twist before cutting your lemon for juicing. I must cut the lemon for juicing. I wish there was a convenient way to keep this book open, so I'm going to put my phone on top of it. That'll be well. Yeah, that works. What was that? What did you say my thing? My book. No, I don't want to hold your book. Don't hold my book. I got you. It's good. Cut this lemon in half. I'm going to juice it. I'm going to give it a nice juicing. Juicing into, it says, just one half a lemon. So I'm going to one half a lemon it. And I'll put it in my cocktail shaker. And actually, I'll be back in just a moment. I'm going to throw some ice into this thing. Because I keep my ice in the fridge. Freezer. Freezer. You got me. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. That's my dearest. That's my Anna, my fiance. We hope to do the technical difficulties, but she has the time to, to bring herself away from her studies. I have studies to do too, but significantly less. I'm on break. One half a lemon juice. My cocktail shaker. Just gonna get all squeezed. All right. Squeezed and squuzzed. Squeezing and the squuzzing. Cool. I did that. Next, I need. The lemon twist, add the juice of half a lemon, and iced tea. It says to create iced tea. So I actually made some iced tea according to the recipe in this book. It's actually insanely easy. You just take English breakfast tea, you boil it, add a bit more sugar, you put some lemon juice in there, let it come down to a simmer, and that's that. It's like lemonade, but it's iced tea, which is Ulmer Palmer, basically. It's iced tea and lemonade, and it calls for an ounce and a half of that, so I prepared that ahead of time. It's very, very... Very lemony. It's very Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer. -y. Smells like tea. Tastes like English breakfast. And yeah, lemon juice. Like lemonade. So take one and a half ounces of that. Pour that as carefully as I possibly can into here. Whoop. It's one and a half into my shaker, which I've got to the side. I'll put that at a different angle. There we go. Trying my best just to. I figured I'd put on a bit of a performance. I do like to perform. It's my favorite thing to do. Then, this is that. Use a bar spoon. Ice cubes pour bourbon over the ice. Whoop, I forgot to pour the bourbon. I'm just using this bourbon. It's in a 10 high sour mash bottle. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think it's sour mash. I had it a bit last week and it's definitely not sour mash whiskey. So I'm just going to guess it's bourbon. That's my guess. I'll pour that Boop. into my shaker. And I'll put that little thing back on. You can tell it's cheap. Why? Thing. Or maybe it's not cheap. I may have just uh, changed the bottle. It says, oh, is this one stirred in the glass with ginger ale? Whoops, look at that. I don't even need my cocktail shaker. Look at that. I stir it in the glass. I'm not shaking this one. The things I thought I knew, I was incorrect. I just stir that in here for a bit. Most of the golden afternoon. This is not a good glass for shaking. It really isn't. I'm sorry. A good glass for stirring. It's not. It's kind of jagged around the edges and stuff. See, that tastes pretty good, and it tastes like whiskey and lemon juice. And then what we add to kind of top things off. Oh, my book. My book got a little cold. Oh well. We fill the rest up with ginger ale. I've got a nice Canada Dry. 
It sits around for this very purpose. We'll be using cocktails. Woo! Spicy! I'll pour the rest up with ginger ale. A little spritz in action there. To garnish this drink over here, I am going to add a nice flamboyant display of mint leaves. And for that, I need something to get the mint leaves off of the mint plant, which I have sitting in this little corner over here because I finally bought myself some nice mint. I like that. I'll just kind of pluck them off my finger. There's a mint leaf. That's a good one. There is a mint leaf. That's a good one. Collect a couple of mint leaves. There's mint leaves. No, the mint leaf. Let's go. Ah, let's do one more. I've got plenty of mint here. Plenty of mint. The mint is fresh. It has cell walls. That's science, baby. And now, you want to get that mint. You want to express it. So, I'm going to give it a little spank. That's pretty weird. But now, my hands smell incredibly like mint. And it's great. So now, I'm going to take this little bouquet that I just eviscerated my hand and kind of lay that on top of my drink all nice like now my drink smells like mint and lemon and palmer and arnold it smells like arnold and that's the golden afternoon consisting of one half the juice of a lemon ha one and a half ounces of bourbon whiskey or whatever whiskey was in that bottle because i'm i don't know at this point uh, half an ounce, ounce and a half of the iced tea mix, which was just English breakfast tea, some lemon juice, sugar, and water, and something like it. But. And fresh ginger ale with, it says one sprig of fresh mint, but I went crazy because I like mints, and I literally haven't touched this plant since I bought it three weeks ago, so. And that's my golden afternoon inspired by the Alice in Wonderland cocktails. All in the golden afternoon, full leisurely we glide. For both our oars with little skill, thy little arms are plied. Let's go. Well, that mint is incredibly wonderful on top. It's very good. If you've ever had lemon juice or any lemon juice cocktail with whiskey in it, I can't think of any off the top of my head. It's very similar to that, but the mint adds something so much extra to that. It's like that whole mint lemonade. Tea is in there somewhere. I'll admit, the tea is actually not as tea forward. The iced tea is not as tea forward as I originally anticipated that it should be. I made four servings of it, but only had two English breakfast tea bags. And I wasn't about to substitute chai tea in place of the English breakfast. So I was like, ah, whatever. So that's, I just kind of got what I work with. Iced tea is good though. It is good though. I really enjoy that. It's definitely, like the whiskey isn't even like the star of the show. Uh, I'd honestly say it's the iced tea lemonade Arnold Palmer thing. It tastes like an Arnold Palmer with mint sprigged on top of it. It's incredibly aromatic with the mint right up on top. Like, it used to smell strongly of lemon, now it smells strongly of mint, which makes sense. Mint is covering like 70% of the surface on here, so it totally makes sense. Anyway, with that said, I have made yet another cocktail, and with that, I will get back to the game if OBS has yet to crash on me, and I hope it doesn't. And I promise I won't unplug my internet again, because that's just silly. It is silly, which is why I'm the kind of person to be able to do that, because a little silly sometimes and I make mistakes the plugs are right next to each other so it's easy to get them confused I should have just labeled them but I didn't I'm gonna do a little cleanup first actually before I go any further with that this I just need this lemon there a little piece of a lemon that looks pretty bar spoon back in here so later on strain it back up on top make things look all pretty before I head back over I don't have anybody to clean up after me and I will be coming back here so might as well make it look nice Yes. Anyway, I've got my drink and stuff, so I'm going to make my way over here. i got to switch places, so I need to unplug my microphone. My voice will be back in a moment.
phone. And I believe the microphone is all set up again. Now I must switch the cameras. Because I just figured out how to do this dual setup about an hour or two ago. So switch things. Deactivate, reactivate. Back to the live screen. I thought I activated it. Where are you? HD camera from Magnet Zone. There you go. There we go. We're back. And as it turns out, I threw my microphone cable over and it killed my video. So I'm going to fix that real quick. <laughs> Whoops. There we go. And I'm back over here now. Perfection, perfection. Perfect. Now it's back to the Valhalla game. It's time for uh, back for the actual game. Excuse me. Once again, I'll apologize for the technical difficulties. I didn't mean it. Honestly. Honestly didn't mean it. Okay. On for another night with my golden afternoon cocktail. Alright, well let's see what the news has to offer. Cool. Danger U has some updates. Monster Girl from Churri, I think Grand Slam Fighters, or Makise. I think Makise is the one that's up. <clears throat> Makise releasing EK DV 186 update. Is this the greatest thing to ever grace planet Earth? I literally can't stop touching myself. Oh, wait. I'm pretty sure I've seen that comment before. I think I read that. You know what? I'm gonna do it again. Is this the greatest place to ever grace this planet earth i literally can't stop touching myself such a high quality release but why is the camel blurry i think it's a regulation for the civilian modules something's off i'd be all over this normally but i can't seem to get excited over this your shit taste is showing nah i just think i'm kind of uh, dis uh, dis and i'm kind of tired of doing the same thing over and over again that's what happens when you consume way too much fucking military equipment and weapons yeah i think it's that i better stop buying so many weapons already or i'll never find pleasure in them again any word on the camo stuff for other civilian weaponry? They said they were going to announce more stuff on that at a later date. I like porn, guys. What is closed? Invisible guns. Meow. I think they'll use it for acute patterns. Grand Slam Fighters, I think is the newest one. Is anyone into wrestling here? I became a huge fan of GSF very recently. It's a really solid product, in my opinion. Much better than the E. I like the match quality, but I wish they gave importance to the mid card. Are they still forcing 66 American Kid into the main event? Yup! He's going to face Yusuke at the Dome Show. Ugh, why did they push the great DK instead? He's so much more talented than at 66. Because American Kid actually moves merch, unlike your indie darling. I want to marry Yusuke! Who's hyped for the Women's Championship? That one should be the main event, not the turd we're getting instead. 66 is pretty cool. Just watch some of his work in Japan. Everyone tells me 66 was better in Japan, but all I see is locks and arm bars. Nothing that impressive. Wrestling is fake. This thing is closed. Amazing how I know all the words, and yet I understand nothing. Absolutely nothing. Swap my camera a bit. Oh, my hair's a mess from taking my headphones on and off. Dearest would not be proud, so I shall fix that real quick. There we go. We'll see how that works. Back to here, back to there. The Augmented Eye has some new articles. Ooh. Model Warrior Julianne returns. Model Warrior Julianne returns this February by Lana Smithy. The classic magical girl show Model Warrior Julianne is coming back to public television this February after almost two decades of absence. Even though the show has been on every on-demand service for a while now, most of Glitch City citizens need to think twice before subscribing to any non-essential service, especially the lower classes who have yet a limited number of internet purchases per year. The show's return is certainly welcome. Today's parents will finally be able to share a piece of their childhood with the kids without risking dinner or breakfast. Wow, is that a tear in your eye? No. Nanomachine, nanomachine Rejection has taken 80 lives this year by Lana Smithy. The Health Observatory just released their annual report on nanomachine rejection cases. The total number of reported cases has risen 80, an increase from the 65 cases reported last year. Nanomachine reject pollution was particularly strong this year due to the machine pro recent protests, wrote the observatory. Protests caused the police force to release new varieties of nanomachines. Their function is still unclear, but according to our sources, they're intended for crowd control purposes. It's unlikely we'll find a cure in the near future, and we can only hope cases like these will become 
rare in the following years. I wonder if she's among those 80. Lilum receiving mysterious messages. Update by Lana Smithy. It looks like we were able to record and transcribe one of the messages sent from one of the compromised signals. Joe Red, the anchor from our popular TV newscast, served as our very own test subject for the investigation. Who are you? Are you really alive? <laughs> You're special to me. You're everything to me. It's time to become one. Developing. That seems like a... Hmm. Seems like a cyberpunk -y reference. In the one cyberpunk, uh, the couple of cyberpunk books that I read, one of the topics of the books was the combination of two sides of AI to be like transcend, and uh, that I believe is a common theme. Anyway, that's all the reading up here. Uh, I have funds. Should I buy something from Nano Camo? Let's buy something from Nano Camo. Customize. What do I want? That's cool looking. Oh, I don't have enough for it. I want to wait for Jill. Look at the Jill thing. But in that note, we'll go to work. And everything's still functioning. OBS has yet to crap out on me, which is lovely. Good evening. Hi, hey, Jill. How you feeling? I won't say good, but not that bad, I guess. It's nice to hear. Where's Gil? Did he run away again? No, I, I have him on errand duty buying the drinks for tomorrow. That sounds weird coming from the owner of a bar. Every drink from here would come out of our own funds. So if we're going to spend money, we might as well get more variety. Besides, those kind of walks are always good for Gil. You're the boss. Who's coming so far? Well, there's the three of us, the dogs. You invited Titty Hacker. Gil invited Jamie. Oh yeah, I also invited Dorothy when I called her to spend the night with you. <laughs> Sounds good so far. If I know anyone else you feel like inviting, the more the merrier. I could, but I bet everyone's made plans by this point. <laughs> this game ain't called Cyberpunk Bartending Action for Nothing. You're damn right, Meatball Girl. Hello, Meatball Girl. How are you? This is true. I'll be in my office. Call me should anything arise. All right. And I like this song selection for the most part. A couple of these are a little a little too upbeat for the more sensitive moments, but mm, I can't remember which ones they are, so I'm moving on with my life. Time to mix drinks and change lives. I want better lighting over here. I'll fix that eventually. Wait here. I'll check inside. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, a BTC bar. Excuse me, do you know where the Athena Convention Center is? Why does that place make people get lost so easily? They should have called it the Minotaur Center. <laughs> Hold on, let me scribble the directions on paper. Thanks. Go to the right. When you see the building filled with the hobos, this should be it. Thanks a lot. Anything else I can help you with? Mm, uh... Yeah, what the hell? I'll have a drink. What about you? Hmm. Um. A Brantini, please. Right. Girl asked for a Brantini. The Lilum is freaking me the F out. Spooky Lilum. Not so spooky girl wants classy Brantini drink. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uno, dos, trace, and that one. You're heading to the convention center? Yes. Aged. Mixed. I don't need to give you more alcohol than you need. Here you are. Thanks. That's an interesting outfit in this cold season, Miss... Vela. Well, actually, I'm cosplaying, so call me Vela... For the time being. And your Lilum friend is... Essentia. Feed the goth girls. I'm not feeding them anything. I'm giving them drink. That's not feeding. I get it. You're, you're cosplaying too? Sure. 
Let's go with that. Have you heard of a game called Y2K, Bartender? That cult classic game that has seen like three remastered versions made by six different companies this year? That one. Yeah, uh, we're in a cosplay group dedicated to it, and we got lost on the way. I heard you talking to someone outside. Oh yeah, a friend is cosplaying as Alex. I told him to wait outside. Sh shouldn't he enter? He'll be fine. Something amiss? There's a girl behind you. Short hair, black sailor uniform, missing an arm. Wearing jeans under a skirt. No, that's... That's a skeleton. That's... The pirates from Undertale. Now, now, don't speak the bar... Don't spook the bartender. Spook? <clears throat> um, anything else? I'll get a fluffy dream and be on my way. And you? Creepy woman girl. I'm fine. She wants a fluffy dream. Lilum is uh, freaking me out. A fluffy, fluffy dream. Yeah. You want? You want? I don't know. Something about giving you more alcohol just rubs me the wrong way, so I'm not going to give you any more. It's your fluffy dream there, girl. Enjoy it. Take that fluffy dream. Here you go. Yup. This is the thing. Seriously, though, should you leave your friend outside like that? He'll be fine. He started chatting with one of the vending machines. They were talking about R&B music. Does your friend prefer the 1980s R&B or 1970s? 1980s, I think. Oh, shit. Boss! T -t -t Didi! R&B! I'm coming! Um, you see, Didi is a 1970s purist. He has tased people for even liking R&B, 1980s R&B before. He got tased! Oh, God. He'll be fine. Vending machines have very weak tasers. Oh, Didi's the vending machine. Missed that. He'll be confused for a couple of minutes, but that will be that. You should go check on him, though. Right, thanks again for the directions. Please, come again. <sighs> At least it wasn't Franco-Belgian comic opinions this time. Black sailor uniform? I hope I'm just overthinking it. <sighs> More importantly, though, jeans under a skirt. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hey, Dorothy. Oh, hi, honey. Look, it's Anna, the girl who's behind me in the jean shorts and missing arm. Potentially. Hi, honey. Are you okay? I just kind of wandered in here. I guess I'm a bit distracted. Can Lilim just wander? Why'd they tease the dude? Oh. Can I get you something? They tased the dude? They ta Oh, correction. They tased the dude. They tased him. Because he liked 1980s R&B music and not 1970s, which is objectively better according to Dee Dee the Vending Machine. Oh, uh, a sugar rush. Yeah. That. Right. Dorsey's down. She wants a sugar rush. But hasn't she told me about a drink that cheers her up? This seems really familiar. Did I do this already? What is she like? Oh goodness, I can't remember. Bad touch makes her go hee hee. Brantini, Bleeding Jane, Cabal Velvet, Fluffy Dream, Death, Frothy Weaver, Bob Bob, Mars Bob, Fat Da 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 Da, Piano Woman, Pile Driver, Then Star, Sparkle Star, Sugar Rush. I really don't remember. Oh my god. Bad touch gives me the hee hee, so I'm gonna give her a bad touch. Because the bad touch is a, it's a funny name. Let's see if that works. I don't think it will. But I'm trying my best. Here for a good time, not a long time. Zero. Here. Whoops. Thanks. Uh. Hmm. She didn't notice it was the wrong drink. 
so much silence. By the way, thanks for staying with me the other day. It turns out I really needed that. So did you enjoy the soda? Oh, did you find that one out? Was it supposed to be a secret? No, but I don't go around telling everybody about that. I did it because it was you who needed my help, but a hug night is usually one of my most expensive services. It is? Hey, I don't know if the client has body odor or something like that. Not to mention, it limits the chances of getting any other client that night. Still, did it help? Yeah. Helped me cool down a lot. So, from what Dana told me, someone close to you died, right? Yeah. D do you want to know more about it? Do you want to tell me about it? I've brought it up enough times already, I think. No problem, then. You were sad, and that's all I needed to know. Sorry for the loss, though. I mean, I mean it. Thanks. Although, I've wondered for a while, do you, Lilum, really understand death? Sorta, of, kinda. Our whole database is constantly being backed up in the collective source. Even if our bodies are destroyed, we can be deployed again with our personalities and memories intact. Maybe a strange case of deja vu. I feel like I've been in this conversation before. So, our concept of mortality might be different. We do have a fear of death, though. You do? We can't even begin to understand the idea of not being redeployed. While we have built-in warnings, the mere idea of that nothingness is paralyzing. There are a few that don't mind it, but we do fear death and we don't wish it on anyone. In fact, there was that the argument used for about that was the argument used for abolishing the whole three laws thing. You seem quite knowledgeable about robot history. Seeing what others have done to make sure I can live like I do helps me not take things for granted. Seriously, though, those laws are bullshit. Can't harm humans, can't disobey humans unless it's about hurting them. And you can protect yourself as long as it doesn't harm humans. I, I mean, sure, the first AIs were just helpers and tools and whatnot, but... How could those laws still apply to them after they achieved self-awareness? Who in their right mind would abide only by rules inscribed in some old book? If I remember correctly, those were only the distilled versions of the laws some writer imagined over a hundred years ago. They were a reduced version of all his ideas. However, many authors afterwards took to them like they were the very laws of physics or something. And like many other things, people to still and exaggerate what they need and use it to their favor. Wow, you're a nerd! Look who's talking. Let's change the subject a bit, though. Mood's getting a little gloomy. Your apartment is very comfy, you know? It's a tad small, though. Sorry about that. And your cat is so cute! What was his name again? Four. Why four? I figured if he ever got lost... At least I wanted to be able to yell, FOUR! It happened once. You'd be surprised by how many golf players you run into. And every time you play with them, you can say it's foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can. He was also named after... Someone. Really? Who? A Lilum kid that wanted to transcend. What? Movie character or something? Sure, let's go with that. Hmm. Do you want anything else? Hmm. Let's go with a blue fairy. All right. Blue fairy for the Dorothy. Blue fairy for the Dorothy. It's sweet. It's blue. It's fairy. I feel no need to get her. All tongue-tied, drunk, and twisted tonight. So, blue fairy for you. There you go. Here you go. Here you go, Dorothy. Why do they call it a blue fairy? Is it because of Pinocchio? I believe the name is based off of Absinthe, which some call the Green Fairy. The first versions of the drink were described as Sweeter Absinthe. Sadly, they had to fix the formula because people were turning green. Not blue? A blue-ish green. Can she drink, get drunk being that she's synthetic? Yes! You can get implants as a Lilum 
to be able to get drunk, or at least the feeling of it. And I want to say she has that implant, but I am... I'm not so sure. You seem to have cheered up a bit there. Yeah, talking to you always helps me get my mind off things. Hey. There's something I've been wilding, wondering for a while now. What? What kind of friends do you have? I mean... Are, are they in your line of work? Or... Friends? Aside from you? Thank you. Eh, well, there's Lawrence. The vent, That vending machine is a lot of fun to be with. Once you get past his quirkiness, that is. I've also met a lot of nice people working in the streets. From the top of my head, I can think about... Nightingale, another little one. He changed himself to have fur and more wolf-like face. He's also a pretty good pianist. He plays in a jazz band on the weekends. There's also Nadira, a drag queen, and the owner of a club I've been invited to a few times. She has an animal shelter on the side. I help her with it occasionally. Oh, there's also Sister Clementine, a nun from an orphanage. I get her sometimes and play with the kids. Whoa, that's something I did not expect to hear. I also almost got adopted once. I was flattered, but it was weird. Oh, and it turns out I already knew your boss. Some years ago, she... She what? What? I said too much. Client confidentiality and all that. <clears throat> well, uh, enough tangents. Why were you gloomy in the first place? Gloomy? When you came in, I don't know if gloomy is the right word, but you were pretty quiet at the very least. And knowing how you normally are, it was pretty weird. Oh, don't worry about that. Just had one too many things going on in my mind. I wasn't gloomy or anything. More like distracted, really. Well, I think I'll go now. Thanks for lending me to your honey. My boss told you about the party tomorrow, right? Yep, I wouldn't dare miss that. Okay, then. All right, then. See you tomorrow. Good luck. Bye. Thanks. And that's that. Boss, I will be taking my break. Go righty, then. And that's break time. Not actually break time. I'm not ready for a break yet. I feel bad about the stream just crashing. Absolute atrocities. The absolute atrocities that may encounter me as I go about this world of technology and whatnot is pretty weird. It shan't happen again. I will never get the internet plug mixed up with the light plug again. Save. Let's get back into it. It is now safe to continue playing. 2069. Sukeban games. <clears throat> Excuse me, drinks make me a little gaseous. I gotta buy more cigars! Jukebox. Ready. Back! Did I miss anything? Unless you count the worst PPV main event fight I've seen all year. Not really. Nope. All right. Going out. I'll have a word with Gogo -Go outside. He was so hyped for that match. He must be devastated. All right. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, I say. Good evening, Jill. How are you doing? Nightmares have stopped, so I'm sleeping better. <clears throat> um, how about your injuries? My bones are healing nicely. My wounds finally closed. The scars itch a bit, though. Well, that's... That's good to hear. Are you by yourself today? Yeah, I'm running a couple of errands by myself today, but I wanted to come here for a while. I also noticed that big guy from last time is... Outside. Buster? Nah, uh, Stella doesn't want me being alone while I'm still healing, so she suggested taking him with me. Huh. I see. What can I get you? Something cold. Sure. Something cold for say. 
Something cold and sweet like that. Something sweet like a sugar rush. Doesn't have ice. Doesn't have ice! Blue fairy? It doesn't have ice! Cold! It has to have ice. The moon last. I don't know if I can get Dorothy plastered. I know I can get Save plastered. Do 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 do. This really isn't gonna get anybody too plastered, honestly. Blended, I'd shake my cocktail shaker, but it's on the other side of the camera. Stop button. Moon blast. It's pink. Unlike the moon. I think you'll like this one. Really? <laughs> so sweet of you. Thanks. So, Stella isn't with you today? She's throwing a mega Christmas party tomorrow and is having a meeting today. I'm just helping her by checking on some of the things she ordered. And here I was, all ready to invite you to the party we're throwing tomorrow. You're throwing a party tomorrow too? <sighs> Sorry about that. Can't really say no to Stella. Maybe next time? If there's a next time at all. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I, I want you to know that I want you to have a good time. Have fun. Drink a couple of beers in our honor. I will then. What are Stella's Christmas parties like? They're really big. There's lots of food and drinks and music. Sometimes there's too much food, though. So, at the end of the party, she lets the staff take home whatever's left. She also buys toys for all the children of her staff members. Really? She says something about taxes or whatever, but during the whole thing, she just shines. She carries a beaming smile that I don't see any other day of the year. Many of the kids have even started calling her Auntie Ella. <laughs> Stella always does her best to put up a tough girl facade, but she's very much in touch with her inner child. Christmas, Easter, Halloween, name a party and she most likely celebrates it big. Interesting. You like parties, Jill? I don't mind them. They're a good place to see people. I'm not one to actively look for parties to attend, though I just don't mind going to them. Ah, I see. I only go to parties that Stella is attending, because otherwise I'd just stand there without anything to say. That and I'm not one to wear dresses, you know. You're not? A tad too ripped. They don't look cute on me. Although with all this healing I have to do, I won't be as fit for a while. They're too, um, breezy, too. I, I feel like I'm wearing nothing. Uh, but I bet you look good in a dress, Jill. It's been years since I last wore one. I wouldn't know. Has been a couple years since I wore a dress. Last time I wore one, I remember wearing my arms were too thin or something like that. We all have a complex, huh? I mean, even Stella has her own. That's hard to imagine. Oh, but she does have one. She distresses a lot about her bus size. Really? She's not that small, I think. I'm smaller than her, I think. Actually, it's the opposite. The opposite kind of complex, I mean. She's a bit self-conscious about having a big chest. Really? Again, I've seen bigger chests than hers, to be honest. Although I guess comparisons are useless here, they rarely help with complexes. Well, she does go the extra mile to hide it. In fact, I have no idea how she does it. I mean, I've seen her before, and after she tucks them away, but I, I guess I never cared enough to ask the specifics. That's also why she, when she goes out, she styles her hair in those, um... Drills? They look a bit drilly, don't they? She styles her hair like that to help divert attention away from her dress. And her chest. She seems affluent enough, why not go through the reduction surgery? Because she also kind of likes having that size. She takes her bus size after her mom, and Miss Carmine is quite proud of her chest. Puffing out your chest is a sign of confidence, and a bigger chest means more confidence to show. She's just said that along those lines a lot. Stella has quite the admiration for her mom, so I guess breast reduction would feel like betraying her. 
I'm making it sound like she's hiding J-cups or something like that. I I guess that a taller, thicker person her size would be normal. Just She's just a bit shorter or thinner than the norm. Do you get self-conscious about your bust size, Jill? Not really. I've been more self-conscious about my heights. Although it usually comes up whenever not being average height hinders me somehow. This is how I feel about having a small bust size. See, I'm not much bust, more so chest than anything else. Take notes. What about you? Yes and no. It's not my bust size, but rather that I look too manly sometimes. And I can't help but wonder if bigger boobs would help with that. You're fine. Don't worry. Thank you. Can I get you anything else? Mm. You have something non-alcoholic? I do, yeah. Give me a second. Non-alcoholic, we say. Something with optional karma train. Let's go from backwards. I'm gonna go backwards from the end. Actually, let's find something random. Oh, I saw one with optional. Uh, not the gun punch. She's too, too sweet with that. Too sweet for that. Sparkle star! Give her a big ol' sparkle star! Here you go! It takes age and mixing and bam and sparkle star! And here you go. Here you go, small-ish, not-so-self-conscious, kind of manly-ish looking boob lady. Thanks. You're not one to drink that much alcohol, are you? Makes me feel sleepy, or at the very least makes my legs go numb. It's an annoying feeling, to be honest. It makes me wonder what's so good about getting drunk. I mean, I'm not above it, but it's not exactly a pleasant feeling. You feel like you're sleepy, even when you're not. Your legs go numb, and everything starts sounding funnier than it really is. What's so good about not being able to control yourself? That's a good question, actually. Usually, people like feeling numb because that numbness helps them forget their problems. Even if we don't talk about alcohol, there's a portion of... Even, even if we don't talk about alcohol, there's a portion of people that can't afford food. Or who are suffering from some pain that only alleviates when drunk or high. Doesn't sound really logical on paper, but then again, humans are really ever, if ever, logical creatures. Despair and pain cloud your judgment and make you do stupid things sometimes. Yeah, I guess I've seen that firsthand. This world has an ugly side nobody deserves to be a part of. <clears throat> um, there's also a matter of addiction, you know? You start just like liking the drink, but then you need more of it, and before you know it, you're hooked. Oh yeah, that too. So, tell me, what kind of party are you guys throwing? Nothing fancy, just be me, boss, Gil, a couple of regulars. They'll bring food, chat for a while, and that's it. Man, that sounds so good. At least better than the whole planning madness Stella is throwing right now. If you ever throw something like that again, you let me know. You hear? Sure. Hey, Sai. Yeah? What do you plan on doing now? I'm gonna go check one last errand before going home. No. I mean, like, what do you plan on doing now with the White Knights disbanded at all? Hmm be honest I don't know never prepared a plan B because I figured if you can go with a plan B why not just make it a plan A I'm not the brightest person so I never graduated from college or even high school I could go for a position with the police but it wouldn't be as thrilling and I'm tired of blatant corruption I'm sick of it oh but I'm alive I learned something after that hell in Apollo Trust. Life is not something that you can just throw away easily. Clawing my way out of that place made me realize just how much I want to be alive. 
The body count left in the bank was ridiculous. But I'm still here. I don't know what I'll do, but... I'm alive. I'll figure it out sooner or later. That's nice to know. Oh, I gotta go. Bye, Jill. Good luck with the party! Please, come again. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh. Well, hi, Mr. Detective. Uh, hey there, girl. Give me a strong drink, won't you? Alright. Something strong for Mr. Detective. He wants something manly? I'll give him something manly. Manly and strong by type. Manly. Want something manly? Let's give you the most alcoholic thing that I can find in the manly. That's four Karmatrine. That's four Karmatrine. That's three Karmatrine. That's two. Crevice Spike is also four. Let's go with that. Let's let's give you a gut punch. Big ol' gut punch. Big, big ol' gut punch, because I don't really like... Art, you're a little annoying. I don't know if I like you. I don't know if I like you, Art. Aged. Give it a mix up. There you go. Your gut punch, as in a punch to the guts. Here you go. Yes, this'll do. So what brought you here? Nothing special. I was just working on a case and I happened to be in the area. Kind of work. Tracking someone. Gun for hire. What about the girl? Crimson something? I am tracking that girl. Didn't you just get out of that job? I did. But the guy offered a huge amount of money and, well, I just couldn't refuse again. Well, it's your life, not mine. I wonder, though, there has to be more to that thing than just acting as middleman to look for some murderer. Um, I'd say... How safe is this place? We're protected by the BTC property laws. The walls are soundproof. I, and I really couldn't give less of a shit about selling info to anyone. Okay, then. Wait. Soundproof walls? Why? Do you see those vending machines outside? They're quite talkative, the bastards. It'd be annoying without those walls. Alrighty then. Have you heard of Lord Lance Lavender? No. He's some big name for Kanyevania. His blood apparently has some weird reaction to Glitch City's nanomachines. Once in contact with the air, it does nothing. But if still fresh and touching someone's blood, the nano machines will initiate a reaction. Essentially, they'll just eat through the other person's body until there's nothing left. They're using him as a guinea pig to see what causes that reaction and if it could be used to fight nano machine rejection. Uh huh. Well, it turns out the Crimson Rose is his daughter. She left years ago to earn her living here, and he hasn't seen her ever since. He could be lying, you know. Doubt it. I did my research. She really is his daughter. Why didn't you figure that out earlier? I had no clue who was making the contract, and tracking all the messages to the source would have been too costly. Knowing who the sender was made things easier. I see. Can I get you anything else? Hmm, what about a Cobalt Velvet? Okay. Cobalt Velvet for Mr. Old Detective over here. I'll comment. I'll make another comment on this drink that I just made up. The Golden Afternoon. The whole lemon. Lemon and whiskey combination with the mint is awesome. It's a really good combo. I would definitely recommend that. Let's get you drunk, dude! Oh, I put the wrong thing in there. Whoops. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. And woo! A heap and load of this shit. Let's get you drunk as fuck! On the rocks, give it a mix. There's your big old cobalt velvet. Here you are. Oh, you actually did it. You expecting me to mess up so you didn't have to pay? Uh, no, no. So, 
What made you accept the contract anyway, keeping in mind all the risks you told me last time? He told me he wanted to see her again one last time, or at the very least, deliver her message. He could have been lying. Yes, people lie. You made your point. Even then, I felt like I couldn't say no. I mean, I know what it's like not being able to find your daughter. What it's like to be apart from her, not knowing what she's doing, or even if she's alright. You do? I have a daughter. She's about your age. When she was a teen, we had a big fight and she ran away from home. At first, I just waited for her to show up, but... And I started getting worried, and I went out to find her, and I couldn't find any trace of her. Nobody had seen her soon. I was worried if something might have happened to her. I guess that's how my tracking skills and list of contacts began to grow. I finally found her, taking cover in some dumpster unconscious from starvation. So yeah, I just... I, I just couldn't say no to the request of finding your daughter. But I don't expect you to understand. So, how's the search going? I'm very close to finding her. That girl's pretty good at covering her tracks. Compared to her, the, her from before, the bank incident, though, she seems slower somehow. Either she's let her guard down or something else is happening. What will you do when you find her? <clears throat> I have this letter I'm supposed to deliver to her. I don't know what it says, and I don't want to find out. What if she tries to kill you? I might not look like, but I can take care of myself, bartender. Oof. You don't stay so long in this business without picking up a couple of tricks. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, I better go back to work before her trail gets goes cold. Please come again. Are you done? No. Yeah. Okay then, I want you here tomorrow at 8 p.m. No working beforehand. The bar will be closed tomorrow. Come dress in your absolute best. We're having a party after all. All right. Where's Gil, by the way? He stored all of our things in his home because of how close it was to the stores. So I told him to go home already and bring the stuff tomorrow. I see. Well, see you tomorrow, boss. Hold on. Wait a bit. I'll go with you. Sure. Thanks. Total earnings from this in evening. No, total earnings in general. $30,430. Drinks total 1780 Mistakes none. Commission 30%. Today's payment $534. Tips 300. Flawless service bonus 500. I know this small party is what you need. 300. Total transfer is 1634. Total funds 2962. And we'll click to continue. Merry Mega Christmas! Let us celebrate Santa's resurrection as the Mega Santa that saved Christmas from the Redmonds. Happy holidays. Wonderful. And the end of that has come. Pretty much finished my golden afternoon. So it is time to create yet another cocktail. For those following along at home, you'll give me just a moment to set myself up. I'll pull things up onto my phone. Let's get her done. Happy Mega Season! Alright, let's do some switches. My video will freeze. Then we'll switch to the other screen, which I will deactivate and reactivate. Everything working? Doot, doot, doot. Oh, wrong one. Let's try this one. Dude. Yep, that's working. You'll excuse me for just a moment while I move my microphone.
one has been plugged back in. I will secure it as I've done previously. New bar soap. Is it okay? I hope it's okay. I think it's okay. And I think we're still going. Let me check my screen to make sure. Yes, we are. Perfect. Hello again and welcome to my makeshift bar. I'm going to make another cocktail because I run out and I've had two so far. So we're going for it. This next cocktail that I have prepared, it's not prepared. I mean, I did do some preparation work for it. It's called the Cobra's Fang. And it comes, actually, this one did, this one required a lot of prep work. And where is my tiki book? Where's my book at? Oh no! Where's my book at? Excuse me, I need to go find my book. Where do I want to put my book? There you are. It's on top of the printer. This was a book that I was actually talking about the other day while I was on stream. Yeah, I actually just bought it the other day, and it has tiki cocktails. Tiki cocktails are pretty cool. They have a lot of very interesting ingredients to them. And by, excuse me, interesting, what I mean is they have, like, special, like, you gotta make things for them. I'll explain that in a moment. The book that I'm, uh, the, the book that I'm drinking, the cocktail that I am making and giving a taste is called the... Cobra Spang! And the Cobra Spang uses a couple of really special ingredients. And by special, I mean like I've never used them in a cocktail before. They require actually preparatory work to make. One of the special ingredients is called Falernum. And Falernum is like a rum syrup type thing. You take equal parts of the highest proof rum that you got, you mix it with simple syrup, so it's sugary and it's in high in alcohol. You mix those two together and you steep it, kind of like you would with tea with allspice berries and vanilla bean or various other things but most importantly it's the allspice and the lime zest you had to i had to zest three whole limes for this particular cocktail for the flannum alone and it comes out smelling super limey super rummy honestly not as much allspicy as you may think so that's the flannum with this as well as spice simple syrup and you can make any type of simple syrup that you want, really. You just put stuff inside of it as you're boiling it up. You can make like a ginger syrup, which is just, just ginger syrup. Pretty much any just syrup in general. You just make it kind of like a, in the simple style. I will keep this book open and I will begin creating this cocktail over here. And this one is shaken, so I will accurately use my shaker this time. Please excuse me while I go grab some ice and put it into the cocktail shaker. I'm gonna go over here and grab my ice. And I sneakily grabbed something else too, which I hope, I hope you didn't see. So the first thing that I will add to this is one and a half ounces of aged rum. Technically, I don't have an aged rum. The closest thing I have is I figured age would add some funk to it, so I have grabbed my Plantation 3 Star Rum here. It adds a little bit of interestingness to a cocktail. So I will add one and a half ounces of that. I can barely see in this, I can barely see in this light. Wowza. All right. One and a half ounces of that. Put that to the side. It smells, it smells great. Very nice smelling. Almost banana-y. It kind of smells like bananas. I wanted to use it in my banana cocktail before, but I didn't because it called for dark rum. And this isn't dark rum. Next, I will add a uh, three quarters of an ounce of overproof rum. I do have overproof rum over here. It is Gosling's. It's the dark rum from before, but now it's it's flammable. So I will add that. Three quarters of an ounce of that. I will excuse my slouching stature. Three quarters of an ounce of that into the glass. My thingamabob over there. That's my overproof rum. And then uh, half an ounce of lime juice, meaning I gotta. Take a lime over here, do a squeezy, do a little squeeze, cut this lime up, see, probably get half an ounce from potentially the whole lime. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Put the lime in there. Get a half an ounce of this guy, we'll squeeze it. Let's see about that. Uh, did I get half an ounce? Uh, I gotta keep going. I think I'll need the other half of the, uh, I think I'll need the other half of the thing. I will. I'll need another half an ounce of it. A little 
little bit more from the other half of the lime. I love the way limes smell. They smell so limey. Very, very nice. Put that on there. That's my half an ounce of lime juice. Put that in there. Next, I will need half an ounce of orange juice in place of orange. I have clementines. They're closely related. I could get the orange juice from the fridge, but that ain't fresh. That ain't fresh at all. I like my orange juice. I've got a live studio audience. My name is Anna. Technically, I've got a live studio audience with the people out there. Hello, live studio audience. Half an ounce of orange clementine juice thing. Let me get that a squeeze. Will I get half an ounce from this half? Oh, I'm so close! Um, everything that's going on right now. Same. Hello there, VO. How are you? We're making cocktails! <laughs> it's super professional. I feel like they're making fun of you. Well, I mean, this is not professional at all. Yeah, he's usually... except Except you mean, perhaps, perchance, perchance. You mean professional as in the attire. And actually, this is not professional by any sense of the word. This is cosplay. It's cosplay. I love cosplay. That's half an ounce of my orange juice, clementine juice thing. Oh my god, you know what I forgot? I still have my really shitty attempt at a lemon twist over there that I should have put in my other drink. Here. This is for my other drink. There we go. I got it in the glass. Yeah, see it landed in the glass. No, you did not. Yes, it did. Yeah, it did. You failed. It's like 3 a.m. over there. Oh, my God. Woke up from nothing. Got notification they were streaming. <laughs> yeah. You probably got one of the three notifications because the first time, things were going great. I made a cocktail. I played a game. It was wonderful. Then, upon my next break, I went down to unplug a light. And instead of unplugging a light, I unplugged my internet. Where the hell did you throw that? So I died. I threw it behind. No, I threw it into my glass. See? Nobody's going to argue with me about that. Get out of my camera. Get out of here. Hey, I'm trying to pick up. I'm trying to be professional here. Oh I'll God. clean it up later. Uh huh. Anyway, uh huh. Then the internet died, and then we came back on, and then OBS crashed, and we're having technical difficulties over here. It's it's pretty crazy. Anyway, I had half an ounce of orange juice that I added to there. Let's go one more time. We got the Falernum. I will repeat again. Falernum is a high proof rum. Equal parts with simple syrup. Simple syrup is merely just you take sugar and water, you boil them together. Eventually, the sugar is gone, and that's simple syrup. Put that together, you throw a couple of lightly crushed allspice berries in there, and a bunch of lemon zest. The two notifications and ignored that. I'm glad you ignored it. That was exactly what I was hoping you'd do. <laughs> you can just check the highlights later. Don't worry about the technical difficulties. Editing Cameron will take care of that. This is live camera. This is... Two drinks in, two high proof drinks in Cameron. He doesn't worry about that. Yeah, two anyway. drinks in had So it takes the full air. I had barely any spaghetti because I didn't make a lot. Anyway, I actually just made my falernum this morning. It's supposed to stick for like up to three days. Stick. Stick? Steep for up to three days. Um it steeped for about eight hours. So I siphoned some off. And it smells oh so good. If I can get the bottle open. Oh, like you know what it smells like? It's no, actually, this smells like rum, and lime, Ew. and allspice. What was the one that smelled? I like smell all of it, actually. That's incredible. Let's see. So, oh, I spilled shit on my book. I gotta stop putting my books over here. It's fine. Let's see. It says half an ounce of falernum. So that's what we're gonna do. Half an ounce of falernum. There are a lot of ingredients. Tiki drinks, from what I understand, are very used to having a bunch of different cocktails in them. Or rather, not cocktails, but ingredients in general. That's the falernum. And in addition to that, I will put half an ounce of my spiced simple syrup, which was spiced with cinnamon, clove, and allspice, which is a lovely combination of things it smells. This smells like Christmas. So that's what you get. Christmas smelling simple syrup. Half an ounce of that, put that into my shaker. Into my shaker. And now, the final ingredient for this one is a quarter of an ounce of Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. Maraschino is like a, it's like a sour, uh, like a cherry type thing. It's cool smelling. Really doesn't smell like cherries. It's, a, it's an interesting one. And a quarter of an ounce of that. 
I was really, when I was looking through cocktails to make for tonight, I was like, I really want something that uses this maraschino. And I found something that used the maraschino, and I was very happy with that. Very, very happy with that. Anyway. It's, uh, it's interesting. I like it. And then with that, <clears throat> excuse me, I will give it a shake, because this is a shake and drink. Do that, give it a slap. What's a party trick? Invert party trick? Yeah, can't you shake with party tricks? What do you mean party tricks? If I wanna, if I wanna potentially send this drink over to the ground, sure, I'll, I'll do a flip. Woo. That's cool, I flipped it. <laughs> I'm not a professional, I don't wanna make a mess. That's the hobbyist. If you're lucky, I'll send send straight it to my TV. Yeah, don't hurt Anna. I like her. I don't want to hurt Anna. I don't want to hurt Anna. See, that's my drink. And so I'm going to put this into a fancy little glass because it's a fancy little drink. But first what I'll do instead is I prepared some crushed ice for this, just like the book says. So I'm going to put my crushed ice in here as best as I can. <laughs> like, did you all froze together? Oh my god, I did. That's okay, that's why we have a bar spoon. Come on, crust ice. Get more crust. There we go. It's true, I crushed this last night. There we go. Super f professional. Oh. Crushed ice, crushed ice, crushed ice. Are you going to have room for a drink? Of course I will. This is a weird cocktail glass. Yeah, I guess that's... Guess that's all I'm getting from that. Alrighty then. By the way, happy Trans Day of Visibility. Happy Trans Day of Visibility. We're visible. You're not Everybody's sure. visible. Everybody's visible. Yeah. And I'm going to strain... Does it say strain? Strain contents of shaker into a rocks glass filled with crushed ice garnished with a cobra. I don't know the cobra. Let's see how this works. Pour that into my glass, and I really hope it doesn't overflow. Don't overflow. Don't overflow. I think there's honestly a bit more in there. Oh, right, come on, come on, come on. Did I get it right? Did I get it right? Ah! Too much ice. There we go. That kind of works. And this is my Cobra's Fang, and now I'm going to attempt to, as best as I possibly can, create a Cobra garnish, which is, I don't know. No, I really can't do that. See, I went to the store today and tried to find Whole Cloves, and Whole Foods did not have it. So I'm, I'm working, with, working with what I got. I'm just going to cut two ends off of this orange over here. I'm going to eat the inside of it. Give it a little cut. Eat a whole orange and peel it. I want the peel. The peel is the, the part that I need the most. So yeah, the peel. Basically, I'm going to make a snake. I'm going to make a snake. I'm going to put it in the glass. But before I make the snake, i got to uncoil it. Mm, orange. Sometime. It's juicy. Excuse Four me. people have to watch you eating food. And I'm just gonna cut it in the shape of a snake. A snake with a little tongue hanging out. Can't really see that. I don't have a really good shot of it, but I'm trying my damnedest to make a little cobra. Oh no! It's okay. There's my little cobra. It doesn't have eyes, because I don't have any cloves. I can get a marker and we can put eyes on it. Here, yeah, throw me a marker. Throw me a sharpie. Don't try this at home. Give me a sharpie. Gotcha. Put a little dot there. I don't eat the garnish, so it's okay. Here's my little cobra. My little cobra's gonna sit in the glass, glass like. Ooh, you wanna take a drink? You wanna take a drink of me, you little guy? Yeah, you do. You wanna take a drink? Drink. And that's the cobra's fang. I'm gonna try to drink this now. Thank you, chew. I just finished chewing my clementine. Thank you for live commentary. Oh wow, that's awesome. It tastes very alcoholic, like, but you get 
allspice right off the bat. Okay, you can you can what try. It? Watch for the cobra. It's, it bites. Hey, you tell me. What do you think of this, dearest? The cobra's gonna fall. Up. The cobra's gonna fall. You gotta watch out. It'll bite. Cobra stings. Ew, it's I rough. Know. I know you won't like it. It tastes like rum, silly. Why'd you let me drink that? You just came over, and who am I to stop? A woman who's got her eyes on something. It tastes like allspice, mostly. The allspice comes first. The rum comes immediately after. It kind of leads off with the lime. And then, like, the cinnamon sticks around your mouth. I think allspice first, cinnamon last, everything else co-mingled in between. It's very nice. It has a nice... I didn't understand the term evolution. But it's like, evolution is like, the drink begins tasting like something, and then it kind of evolves over time. And it does have quite a bit of an evolution to it, and I really like that. That's cool. And it's got a little cutie there. Haunted the Vagabond, welcome to the party. And as we do here at the party, when people come along... Oh, you have them over there? Oh yeah, I got party hats over that. here. When you join the party, I can't force you to wear a party hat. Not that I want to, but I put on a party hat for you. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. That sip goes out to you. It's very nice. Hmm. Party hats are the way to go. That's indeed true. Let me get chat for a little bit while I clean up my area over here. I don't have anybody to clean this for me. So how do I switch you? What are you switching? Are you gonna switch me? Are you gonna switch for me? Uh, pretend. If you'd like to. Stop me. I can't remember. I was supposed to stop you. I was supposed to stop you? Meatball! That was a really accurate representation. <laughs> what just occurred here. Um, so if, if you want to... Um, what you're gonna have to do is there are two USB cables on side one. You're gonna unplug one and replug the other. You know what? Don't. It's okay. It's a little confusing. I, I can't even explain it. You said side one and went this way. Side one of the streaming laptop. Side oh, one of okay. the streaming laptop. So if I take it out. I wouldn't. Don't, don't take it out because you'll stop the video over here and this is the show. I'm the show. What are you talking this about? This is not the show. You don't know how to turn on the other show. No, I don't. You don't know how to do it. It's okay. I'll oh. take care of it. I will take care of it. Let's get on over there. Uh, clean up area first. I almost forgot what I was doing over here. Ah! Well, now that I have a used shaker, it's got a little bit of stuff left in it. How much is left in here, actually? I told you. Too much ice. Oh, yeah? Did you drink some? That's cheating. See? Well, I took my taste test, and that was the rest of it. I'm going to throw all my, like, gooks... Or my scraps and stuff in here. Because naturally I don't need them anymore. Got a half a lime. A couple of things there. This is the part of the video that I would edit out. If I edited my videos. Which I really don't. I keep hiccuping. That's rude. I'm drinking. I am not a Twitch thought. What is Careful. Thought? Your fiance will turn into a Twitch thought. I'll show you a Twitch thought. No, I won't. I won't. What That's... is a Twitch thought? Okay, well why don't you think about that for a minute? What do you think a Twitch thought? A regular thought, except on Twitch. Like a thought. But... Not yet, winky face. <laughs> Wink. Winky face. Clean up my lower area. I gotta clean off my spoon. That is disgusting. That's how I clean off my spoon. You're the only one drinking out of there. That's how I clean off my spoon. I'll make fun of you on how you clean up your spoon. And I'll make fun of me for cleaning off my spoon. I clean off my spoon with soap and water. See, this is the beauty of... So, this is the wonderful thing about living with somebody else, somebody that you're incredibly close with. I literally cannot separate myself from the other person. Therefore, I've got my business going on, and she's like, oh my god, what are you doing? Let me sit in your chair. Oh my god, what are you doing? I'm going to click this button over here. I want to help, but I don't know how to, but I want to help anyway. Meanwhile, she's in class. You're so rude! She's in class, and I'm like, yo, can I get you tea or something? She's like, I'm a professional physical therapist. Get away from me. Rude. That's how things go. That's how things go around here. This is the show, everybody. Twitch thoughts do things like show cleavage for views, as I do, but I can't unbutton because it's uncomfortable. Most of them actually suck at streaming, as I do naturally. And most of them are also e-girls, which I am. Obviously. What does an e-girl say? What can I say to make myself seem like an e-girl? I don't know. I'll sell my... Never mind. I'll sell... <laughs> nope. 
I'm not going to talk about selling my urine on the internet. That's disgusting. That's the only thing that comes to mind. They yeah, pretty much That's clean up everything over here. About. Oh, wait, is that a gamer girl or a e girl? Who cares? I don't know why people are selling their piss on the internet. Oh, that's rude. You can't say that. Yo, if people are buying it, market that shit. But I'm not selling my own piss. It's weird. <laughs> weird. God, this is so powerful. Oh, it's so powerful. And, um, uh, yeah, I got another drink for later. There's at least one more night left in this game. The night's not over yet. So it's time for me to switch things up. I will make my way over to the other side. I'm gonna put my things down first, though, as I make way. E-girls demand things from their viewers and get nothing in return. They're degen. Hey, we don't use the term degens around here that lightly. I'll show you a degen. Just kidding. I will not. Um, as entertaining as it might be, I'm gonna turn off my microphone for just a second. I have to unplug it and send it elsewhere. Be back in a moment. And at this point, the microphone is back. Now I just need to do that thing that I was attempting to instruct somebody else to do a moment ago, but I'm very bad at, so I'm gonna just do it myself. If you want something done right, do it yourself. And I think that's been activated, so now I'm back over here. Just kidding, I'm not. Just kidding, let's go again. Yay, party hat time. Let's put that up. So everyone gets to see the party hats. Uh, my fingers are incredibly sticky so if you would allow me to fix that just a moment i will return please don't go anywhere i'll miss you Anyway, we're back to it. Welcome back to the party, everybody. And by welcome back, I should really be welcoming myself back. It's not like you went anywhere. I mean, did you? Did you do anything? It's okay if you did. No problem. It's necessary to do your own thing at the party. I get that. E-girls demand things and give nothing in return. That's unfortunate. I would never give nothing in return. You did, if you did things for me, I would give things to you. Though if I did things for you, I wouldn't expect anything in return, because that's like expected and that's just kind of rude. But in any case, now we're back on the other side. I've got my little, look at that, I got my little cobra. I got my little cobra guy. Can you see his eyes? I can see his eyes. 
it's cute. It's cute enough for me, so. Continue on with the rest of the night. Four says, hmm, wow, a party bed? Jill says, I'll bring you leftovers. Go in here. I'll do a quick save. And whatnot. Let's go over here. There we go. Saved. Uh, the augmented eye has something new. Oh, boy. All right. <clears throat> this just in. Yuri Yuri is the best show this season by Lana Smithy. If you weren't a fan of Yuri or Slice of Life shows already, then be prepared to join the Moe Church this season with the premiere of Yuri Yuri, one of the funniest shows I've seen in recent years. The pals at the popular Danger You forum have seemed divided. However, this is such an obvious pandering. Remember when the anime was about women doing wittily things and beating the shit out of each other? What is this trash? You girls are just haters who hate their lives. I'm gonna marry you, Shinatsu. Wake me up inside! You can catch YY every Friday on RSTV. Meow, wanna watch it? Anime's for nerds. I distinctly disagree with that. They basically mooch off boys and they get away with it because girl. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of a subreddit that I found... It's a collection of letters, and I don't remember what those letters are, but there's, it's a long acronym. It's like, upvoted because girl, but thing is actually cool, or thing is actually cool starring girl, but only upvoted, originally upvoted because of girl. It's really weird. It, you, you'd know it if you see it. This just in. Is it sexist to have an army of robot women by Lana Smithy? The ones without artificial intelligence, mind you. The... King of the West, Khan Jai, from the western nation of Kanyavania, has approximately 6,000 robot soldiers, all of whom look like the hottest girls around. But is this show of quirkiness from the wacky dictator problematic? Those dictators from Venezuela or whatever just do what they want. They don't give a shit. Mariana Zimmer, 35, told Augmented Eye during a street interview, They're all pretty hot, though. If I was him, I'd have done the same. Why bother with the real thing Will you just make them from scratch to match your everyday needs? more as we investigate. I'm pretty sure Kanyevania went through demilitarization before, though. That's essentially e-girls. People just watching to be around girl. Well, to everybody who's trying to simp on some e-girls out there, I'm not an e-girl, but you are welcome to simp nonetheless. This just in, update two, Lilum receiving mysterious messages by Lana Smithy. The messages have suddenly stopped and everything is normal again. Still, we can't stop wondering what's the deal. Was it a prankster or someone who just discovered how to subvert public communication channels in Lilum? Either way, some reports indicate that Lilum behavior has been rather unusual as of late, although we can only imagine the confusion they were going through. Not the first time. Let's not forget that something similar has happened five years ago when Lilum advancement was at its historic high. Fortunately, nothing came out of it. Will it happen again? Only time will tell. Wow. Spooky. A bit, yeah. Disney Queen simps for Cameron, confirmed. That's true. Anna, you're a simp! What? She can't hear me. Don't worry about it! Okay. Okie dokie! Teehee. And there's more things on the Kiramiki blog. Uh, thanks for City Dream Prison. Mega Christmas is here! Mega Christmas is here! By Miki. I'm way too used to Christmas, but Mega Chris mega Tradition here in Glitch City is a mega comfy. I don't know it's an incredibly absurd name. I know it's an incredibly absurd name, and the holiday isn't any less crazy due to its origin, but I find it amazing how Glitch City managed to replace the original festivities. Some places celebrate Christmas eating fried chicken, but here they outright changed the holiday. Well, it's not that different considering they have the same dates but still pretty cool Whoop! gotta go time to sign some books heart heart cobra wow was it mega christmas or mega christmas i don't know and i don't care anyway it's time to go to work actually wait i was planning on doing some nano camo because i wanted that customization thing i want i want jill i want that as my wallpaper yeah! Oh, it's Kiramiki? That's Kiramiki? Is it really? It doesn't look like Kiramiki. Kira! Miki! Okay, whatever. I'm going to work now. Be sad with my sad self. 
Sunday, December 25th. Make a Christmas. Good evening. Jill, I told you to come in the nicest clothes you have. You came in your uniform. These are the nicest clothes I have with me. Besides, you and Gil are in your uniforms too. Well, I can't really show up in casual clothing. I'm being monitored. What about the kilt you wore that one time? I'm still surprised that one didn't break the dress code somehow. And you, Gil? I don't have that many clothes to begin with. Hello, Dakota. How are you? You people depress me. Well, everything is in place back there. Ah, almost here. You know, there was a time when people greeted each other others before saying stuff like that. Come on, Jill. Greet people properly. Greet her properly. Welcome to Valha- Wait. <laughs> she did the she did the greeting thing. <laughs> Loser. Man, if that's not a sign that you need to ease up on work, I don't know what is. Shut up. It's become a reflex. Wait. Alma also came in her usual attire. Why aren't you saying anything to her? Red sweaters get a free pass. Why? Silly question. Never mind. <laughs> Jamie came earlier too. The dogs went with him to get some ice. <laughs> what is going on? Dakota, allow me to introduce you to a wonderful, wonderful game called Valhalla. Long story short, it is a game that a friend of mine a while ago introduced me to. He, she, he's like, or she's like, you would really enjoy this game. I was like, I don't know about that, but we'll see. It's about cocktails, cyberpunk, bartending, action. Um... And so I played it completely through a while ago. I came back, and I'm playing it again because I wanted to play it on stream. It allows me to do some voice acting, and in the meantime, it is the perfect excuse to make cocktails. So that's what I'm doing there. Why do you think you wear ribbed, ribbed sweaters? I don't know. Why do you wear ribbed sweaters? Why don't you inform us? Anyway, it's a visual novel, a game about making cocktails and talking to the people who order them. Do we have ice? It was not you, it was somebody else. Somebody else mentioned this game. It was my buddy, it was my buddy Pepper who suggested this game to me originally. We played it over at uh, her dormitory on campus when she was also going to Stockton. Trying to take it out of the bartending station is a chore, so it's better to buy some outside. The ice, we mean. Huh. What were you doing back there, Alma? Setting up the food, Walma. The what? I bought it three days ago. It's amazing. It looks like just a set of wires, but you can create a frame with them. Put the food inside it, press a button, and watch as war the warms the food up just like a microwave. Sounds like it uses induction heating. <laughs> Excuse me. Wow. <laughs> My god. Had a couple of cocktails so far. Please excuse me. This is number three. It's an, infomer it's an infomercial bubble, though really useful, but tricky to handle at the same time. One wrong move, and we'll be out of food for the night. Everything will be scorched in a second. Oh. So you've bought infomercial stuff too? Haven't you? It's at the very least a good idea for gifts. Well... Dynamic Entry! Finally, at least somebody came after me. Is it weird that I've already heard that three times in the last hour? <sighs> oh, don't be like that. She's not saying it out of malice or anything. She just found it funny. You're taking her side now? Jealous? You wish. You don't need to fight for me. We're not. I'll go check the microwave wires thingy. I'm starting to get hungry. idea back oh ah hello Jill soldier you're late hey Jay see that's how you greet people you shut it I'll go help uh, um, uh, I'll go help sweater pups 
Something wrong? She's not good with dogs. Oh. All right, we're all here, so we can start. Yo, Anchorage! Oh, man. I know what I said. How's the food doing? It's doing well, but I'll... It'll take a bit. Can't you speed it up? I've used these... Those microwave wire things before. It's either warm nicely but slowly, or... Burn that bitch! So, how long? 15 minutes or so. Uh, bell will ring when the time comes. We need to kill some time, then. Hmm. All right, let's play Truth or Dare. What? I'll pass. Games are for the kids. I'm in. Sure. I'll play. Sounds fun. As long as long as it must stay away from me. That'll make the time pass faster. I'll pass. You'll play. It's time for a game of truth or dare. Dude, I used to love playing truth or dare in high school. Back in high school, my, uh, or back when I was in high school, and a little bit afterwards too, my family used to hold a party every single year. And it would be in recognition of the harvest. We are not farmers. A couple of our friends are. It would technically be a very ramped up birthday party for me because I was born in November. And so we'd have this harvest party, and we'd all have people over, and my brother usually had his crew downstairs, I'd have my crew somewhere spread throughout the house and whatnot. But one of the things that we would do, we would hang in the hot tub at night and play Truth or Dare. That, or we'd join the crew downstairs and also play Truth or Dare. Honestly, Truth or Dare was such a fun time, and it's a shame I can't have that many people in one room again as of right now, because that would be awesome. All right, then. The rules are simple. If you get picked, you pick either truth or dare. After you finish, you get to pick somebody else. We go like that until food's done. It's interesting. I think... I guess I must have played this game a little bit different because I believe the last time I played truth or dare in this game, I want to say instead of Dorothy, I had uh, Jamie in her place. So this will be different. We go like that until food's done. What about punishment games? Those are a hassle. Just issue new questions or challenges until the other person complies. That said, chill. Yes! You start. Pick someone. Oh, um... Let's see. Uh... I want to talk to the dog. Okay, then. Dog. And yes, Meatball, you're invited. Everybody's invited. It's a party. This is the party. Did you not get this? Dog. Yes. I dare you to go out and stay there. That's easy. <laughs> That's one problem less. <laughs> well, why don't you continue in the dog's place? Dorothy. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. I dare you, Dana, to pick up honey and carry her like a bride. Dorothy picked up Dana. Who chose Dare? All right. Wait, what? Come, Jill, get up. Oh. Uh, oh. You're welcome. Oh, shut up. Okay then, Jill. Yes. Truth or Dare? Um, Dare? I want you to say. Yes. How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? Uh? It's a tongue twister. Say it. How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? Faster! How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? How can a clam cram in a clean clean can? You make it seem so easy. Do I? How can a clam clap it? Damn. How can a clam cram in a cream? Duh! Wait, let them get confused by tongue twisters? But they're robots. Um, boss? Yes? You can drop me now. Alright. I wonder how long until the food is done. Let's do another one. Gillian, my boy! Okay then, Gil, pick your poison. Truth. 
how did you get into the city? How did you end up here of all places? To be honest, I just wandered aimlessly for some time. Stuff happened and I went from place to place. Eventually, I came across the city and stumbled upon the bar. Almost like it was... Destiny. Huh. Well then. Hey, Alma. Truth or dare? Dare. Try reading that sign without your glasses. All right. For relaxing times, make it sun. The rest is torn off. So you can see without them. I'm not blind, just mildly uncomfortable without my glasses. Boss, what did you pick? What do you pick? I'll go with dare. And actually, before I proceed with this, I'm going to take another quick break. My mother needs to call me about something important, and family comes for us, so I'll be back in just a moment. Whoops, that's the wrong camera. Anyway, back to Valhalla. Excuse me, I had to answer tax questions. And while I was answering tax questions, I got an informant tip. If any of you out there enjoy Valhalla, the game itself, somebody who just popped by, Haunted the Vagabond, is streaming it right now as well. So if you would like to, go ahead and pop a follow over to them. 
I'm sure they would very much appreciate it. And I appreciate the follow from you, Haunted. Anyway, let's continue. I'll go with Dare. Try to undo that bed hair of yours. Bed hair? Yeah, you know, that one bit of hair that's always protruding. I have no idea what you're saying. Here, let me tr let me try. It's very tough. They're picking, picking at each other's hair. Maybe if I split it, oh, it's rejoined on its own. Silly Armitage. By the way, I should mention at this point, it's been mentioned enough. Dana keeps calling Alma Armitage. Armitage is the name of one of the characters in the book Neuromancer, which is cyberpunk, which this game is. I don't know if it's a reference, but it sure as hell feels like it. Anyway, check out Neuromancer by William Gibson. Pretty cool. That ahoge is like my ahog. Ahoge? Ahoge? It's like my willpower. You can't placate it! Right. The fuck is an ahoge? Well, it's a. Uh... Boss, please continue. Right. Well then, Jill. Truth. What would you do if four was a girl and pregnant? Ahoge. Ahoge. I wouldn't do anything. I mean, you educate them, give them the tools, but it's up to them in the end. I'd just make sure she was able to cope with it. Ahoge! Ahoge? Ahoge. Ahoge. Oof. I'd only call myself a failure if it was the result of personal irresponsibility. But if it's her choice, or if she's at least able to take responsibility, then I can only support. After all, she didn't kill someone. She's bringing a new life into this world. Whoa. Hey, honey, be a mom. Jill. It's a hypothetical scenario, and it's a cat. Your point being? I'm getting hungry. I can't click on Red Shiva! Because they sent him outside. Let's go with, uh, Alma then. Okay, Alma, truth or dare? Hmm, dare. Then I dare you to call Gil by his real name. Gillian. So you can actually do it. Of course I can, but messing with Dilbert is more fun. Well then, Dorothy, truth or dare? I'll pick truth. Do you have any dreams that you'd want to eventually fulfill? Well, this might sound silly, but I want to work with kids. Oh. I have a friend that works in an orphanage. I help her from time to time. And I find it so much fun to work with kids. I can't explain why. If I had to pick another job or think of something I want to eventually try, that would be it. Teacher, nurse, pediatrician, something like that. That wasn't an answer I expected. Me neither. What are you implying? Okay. Hey, John! Pick! Um, dare? I dare you to say something nice about all us playing. <sighs> well, you're a pretty cheerful girl, Dorothy. Uh, of course I am. Chief, well, I pretty much owe you everything for giving me my life any semblance of order. Of course you do. Um, uh, you can be a really caring person. Can be. And Jill, you're a pretty smart girl. I wonder if that's true. So, is nobody going to say anything nice about him in return? What is there to say? He's one of the nicest and most responsible guys I've met. The kind that gets you talking through an expression of his sincere interest. The kind of guy that will go through the extra mile when asked not to. You could always say that more frequently, you know. A bell? Food's ready. Finally! Let's go. You guys go ahead. I'll have a quick smoke outside. Careful! Truth or dare, huh? Something else. That's fun, I guess. Hey. I'll... I mean, hello? A bit late for the hello, don't you think? Want one? 
You know I don't smoke. True. Are you leaving already? Yeah. Technically, we celebrated Mega Christmas yesterday. But I just got a message that Diana is making a ruckus, so I gotta leave. Good luck with that. Speaking of ruckus, how have you been doing? Fine. I guess all this has helped keep my mind off things for a while. Is it weird to feel the absence of someone you had no contact with whatsoever for the last three years? Ask Katyusha or any of the old literature maidens whose spouse went to war types. I mean, even if you had no contact with her, maybe she was constantly on your mind. If you tweak the circumstances, it's not that different from one you, one of you going to war. I guess. Well, although the circumstances make me not want to, I really gotta go. Careful out there. Oh yeah, yeah. You should take the chance and spend this time with everyone inside, don't you think? Yeah, she's right. Hey, Jill's back! The moon, ladies, gentlemen, and all those persons in between and outside. Fix my posture, holy shit! You're absolutely right. Excuse me. It's tense. The moon appears that it has been shot open. Jill is hanging there. She's, um, she got the cat. Four. She got a beer. That. Tense. I don't remember this scene last time. Chapter three. Dulce. Was there that much more to this game than I thought there was? Ooh. I didn't know about that. Rent is due on the 30th. No kidding, wait a minute. There's no way. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. If I go back to my saved games... Okay, no, no, no. There was a bit more. No, look at that. Oh my god. So there's a couple days left. I actually misinter- I didn't remember how many games were- uh, how many days were left. Whoops. It's only like 10 o'clock. I can keep going. <clears throat> Excuse me, my goodness. So this is day 14. Okay, so there's this night, and then the next night. Uh, pff, I haven't finished this streak yet. That went a lot quicker than I thought it would, so I will continue on. And if this is night 14, there is a night 15, which means I will be able to bake another cocktail by the end of the night, which I'm actually really excited about. Um, I will take a quick pee break, though, and I will return talking about how much I fantasize about this next drink that I'm going to make, because I'm really, really excited about it. Hold for a moment. Enjoy the parrots.
Oh my god, I'm the wrong screen again. There we go. My apologies for being away for so long. I got myself a cereal bar because I was hungry as well. Anyway, we're back at the apartment, so that means we're going to check and see if there has been anything updated over here on the forums. Danger You has some more stuff. Girlfriend Chirari, Grand Slam Fighters, Model Warrior returns to TV. Anyone watching it? I don't even have a TV. So useless. Juliet is old and busted. I heard you talking shit about my waifu like I wouldn't find out. Is it going to be censored? I don't think so. The show was rather tight. Hey, as far as I know, I'm going to marry Julianne. Oh, man. I remember watching the show back when I was like 10. I think I discovered porn thanks to it. You will never discover Rule 34 for the first time again. Why keep trying? I've never seen this show before. Is it any good or is it just a meme? It's a meme show. There's nothing outstanding. What about the sequels? Are those going to be the broadcasters as well? Sequels are shit. This thread is closed. Wow, is your lip trembling? No. No, I'm not. To the augmented eye. Um... Man, there's a lot of articles. All right, let me drink some water. And get into it. This just in, street race at the Motor City District leaves two dead by Lana Smith. The Motor City District is notorious for the number of illegal street races it sees each week and the dozens of injured drivers it leaves every year. This time, it has been reported that two people died during a race hosted at the Gate Highway, otherwise known as the Death Lane. The Transit Police is currently investigating the deaths as well as the underground world of illegal street racing. We have several press suspects in regards to who is running this underworld, but nothing concrete as of yet. Chief of the Transit, Poli Transit De Police Department, Esposito, told the odd man and I, the death of these two youngsters will be the last. However, that's a promise. Sing for us! All right, let's see. I'm going to set a timer. Let's go with five minutes. Wake me up in five minutes, Google. Thanks, pal. Here's a matching video. No, I said wake me up in five minutes. Wake me up in five minutes. Perfect. <clears throat> Jill. I've never heard that defamation campaign against the district, though. Now for the rest of the augmented eye. This just in. You won't believe what happens in this cartoon by Lana Smithy. Cartoons are not for children. They're still largely colorful, but the themes they touch have become rather dark. In fact, every cartoon on air today has dark themes. It's come to the point where innocent animated characters are no longer a thing. I suppose children are young adults from birth now. But enter Touch Fluffy Tail, a new show that aims to challenge the current trend. No deep lore, no upscore adult references, no stupid deep plots, just fun with numbers and fluffy tales, said a TFT producer who has to remain anonymous to avoid internet backlash. <laughs> I don't want death threats for making a cartoon for kids. For the cat says, meow, stop. Jill says, I rescued you. I'll touch your tail if you want me to. Next. This just in, Glitch City Olympics returns this next year by Lana Smithy. For the 10th consecutive year, the GC Olympics returns to the emblematic Super Silver Seal Thunderdome, this time with a representative from the elusive country of Kanye Vanya. Prime Minister Quincy, who's in charge of the committee, told the augmented eye that it wasn't easy getting in touch with Kanjai. And that we had to abide by some of his religious rules in order to see some of their best competitors come to the country. Kanyevania's main religion, Kanyeism, prohibits the existence of nanomachines inside the body. And as such, competitors from said country had to perform specific treatments in order to repel the swarm. It's a temporary solution. It'll do the trick. Jill says, I'm guessing tacky bodysuits weren't practical for sports. Says Jill. How much left do I have to do with this? I say, with three minutes left remaining, I'll return to the game and proceed with my next night of work. I need a swig of cocktail for this. 
Curse you, Disney Queen. <sighs> Good evening. Hey, Jill. Gil is in the back sorting ingredients. Shipment of got a things to do. The dog's in charge. Okay, bye. What? Wait. The dog did what now? Okay, first door to me. Pet me. No. Pet me. No. I'm in charge and I want you to pet me. I don't think I will. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The jukebox will not change. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Hopefully I killed some time with that. Hey, Jay. Won't pet you. You'll pet me sooner or later. They all do. Won't. Will. You called. He said Will, not Gil. Ah, uh, hmm. Who the hell is Will? Nobody! Don't be rude with the poor Will. There's no Will! Do you need me to psych you up then? How the hell do I keep this going? It's my exact thought until now. I can't believe I've been doing this for five minutes now. Jeez, it's almost 10.22. The horror is almost over. Why would I subject myself to this kind of torture? Do you need me to psych you up then? Shut up! And that's that. Oh my god. Consume! I took a drink of my drink. And I've completed both of them. Yes. Please note. Twitch TOS says, I cannot incentivize... Anything related to alcohol. Which is why I will consume my water. Although, there is a cocktail around here somewhere. Shut up! Who, me or Will? Ugh! You go back to whatever you were doing. And yes, I did put on a timer because this. There are safe limits with which to consume. You wouldn't want to disembowel something. <laughs> I wouldn't want to. It hurt my bones. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You go back to whatever you were doing. <laughs> Jeez. Somebody needs to spook me. You know what scares me the most? Notifications. All right. And you. Stand by. Only if you pet me. <sighs> the fuck just happened? Well, aren't we spirited today? Welcome to the... Oh, Virgilio? Why do you sound so weirded out? You didn't show up with a bombastic soliloquy. Well, putting up an act can be tiring, you know. So it's all an act then? Wasn't it obvious? I guess. Would you mind getting me a Bleeding Jane? Sure. He wants a Bleeding Jane. Not something super crazy this time. That's pretty cool, actually. Bleeding Jane, kind of like the Bloody Mary, or so we think. Let's give him a double. It doesn't have any alcohol in it, so it doesn't matter. Except when I put alcohol in it by accident. <laughs> Whoops. Oh my god. Clearly, the alcohol is going to my head. There we go. Give it a blend. Plus, the downside of the consume thing is, honestly, I'll consume upon my autocord every once in a while. Because I like the way my drinks taste. It's super allspicy. If I haven't already made that clear, it's very allspicy, this drink. If you never have allspice, I don't know. Smell something crispy. Something wintry. A Bleeding Jane. Yes, this is just the thing. 
So, tired of putting on an act? Care to explain? It's a long story and I'd honestly rather not talk about it right now. Fair enough. What made you change your mind though? Well, for one thing, it's safer for me now. The pompous buffoon act was mostly a way to avoid raising suspicion. Safer. There's a word that's been lo there's a word that's been losing meaning lately. Wait. That was your way of avoiding suspicion? Yes. You do know how weird that sounds, right? Sounds weird? You try not to raise suspicion, but you act in a bombastic manner that screams you're there. And everyone dismisses the fool as a buffoon and moves on. <laughs> I mean, you might be right if I were talking about hiding myself. But I'm avoiding certain crowds of people. Yes, my behavior might call everyone's attention. But then everyone just decides I'm harmless and disregards me. And depending on how erratic my actions are, I become harder to read. Giving me yet another layer of enigma. Enigma. Why do those two drinks seem like an allegory for the time of the month? Bleeding Jane and Bloody Mary? I don't know. Why don't you ask Jane or Mary? Huh. Well, congrats. No offense, but I fell right into your plan. I just dismissed your actions as those of a fool and moved on. You completely fooled me. Also, he's got a tattoo on his head the shape of a question mark. What a weirdo. Thanks. Say, can you give me something spicy? Sure. Spicy, 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 spicy. I know something spicy. Spiced tea. That or something, I know there's something in here that actually tastes spicy and I forget which one it is. H how, how do you look them up? A phone book. Find Miss Mary Jane in the phone book as well as, um, actually, yeah, Mary Jane. Yeah, Bleeding Jane, Bloody Mary, Mary Jane, Marijuana. I don't know. Look it up. Google it. Something spicy. Something spicy. Velvety, ethylic alcohol, favorite beer, unbearable, punch made of innards, leave your face red, something like that. Hadron Ken, represent opinions, pretty women. It doesn't burn as hard as the tongue, but you better not have a sore throat. Something spicy. Uh, isn't flavor a spicy? Spicy drinks. Ah, okay. Let's do the bloom light. I haven't made one of those in a while. One, two, three, four. Uno. Uno dos. I really want to see Virgilio drunk off his ass. So let's do that. Aged. Rocks. Mixed. There we go. Bloom light. Let's do it. Here you go there, pal. Mr. Valzilio. Oh my god. I'll admit, could definitely have eaten more pasta. Here you go. Aren't you fascinated by spiciness? What's spicy for humans might not be spicy for other animals. Hell, what's toxic for us might not be for other creatures. Do you like spicy things, bartender? I don't mind them, I guess, but I'm not really a fan of things that are spicy, that is. That neutral stance is actually weird to come across. Everyone either loves spicy things or hates them with a passion. Do you like it? Lots. Not only in regards to painfully spicy things, but also the way mild or slight spice adds to a meal. I've always had this dream of opening a curry stand. As things are, I might actually pursue that dream. Let me know if you do. I haven't had curry in ages now. Hey, bartender. Call me Jill. Please. Call me Jill. I wanted to apologize. Mm -hmm. You put up with me all this time without lashing out, and I should apologize for my behavior and thank you with that. Don't worry, I actually feel like I was too rude to you the last time that you came. So I'm here to make up for it. Granted, you came at a really bad time, but... 
I should be the one apologizing. You're a client, after all. And I've been having thoughts about how you look like a chubby Riddler, but without the green character motif, and I just want to apologize about that. Well, don't. I'm actually surprised that nobody else had violently lashed out at me yet. You're making me curious as to who you really are, though. Is Virgilio even your real name? It might be. It might not. Sometimes I wonder if I'm a magnet for people who hide their identities and sordid pasts. Gil. Jamie. You. Um, did you say something? Just rambling. Pay me no mind. Now that I think about it, how did you find this bar? I was avoiding some chaps and came to this alley. Huh. Again. Again? In my time here, I've heard avoided people and ended up here enough times to make me believe that the original owner built the bar here thinking about the runaway public. You make me sound like a criminal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Truth is, in the eye of the beholder, Doctor, I never tell the truth because I don't believe there is such a thing. That is why I prefer the straight line simplicity of cutting cloth. Garrick, whatever DS9 is. I don't know what DS9 is. You're not helping. Meatball, you're not helping. The expression runaway doesn't just mean people escaping the law, though. We've had people avoiding stalkers or solicitors. Star Trek. All right. I've seen people more shocked by an insistent salesman than a shady figure. Maybe because the salesman is a more active predator? I, uh, I don't know. A troublesome part of the city right near the shopping district. Let them know there's a bar and they'll come. Sorry, I, I should stop rambling to myself so much. I don't mind it. Do you think I'm some sort of criminal, though? Like I said, you're not helping. But for all I know, you might be the buffoon I've seen the other days. In any case, can I get something bitter here? On it. Yeah, you want something bitter? I'll give you something bitter. Flavor. Bitter. Bam. Grizzly temple. Rawr, like a grizzly bear. Brown some eggs and eggs, some powdered delta, throw it in there, and a karma tree, and I want to get you drunk, so we're going to double the proportions and bronson extract and aldehyde, and we're going to blend it. Ooh, we're going to blend it real good, brother. I imagine Hulk Hogan. Would be drinking a grizzly temple. <laughs> I'm hiccuping so much, this is quite embarrassing. Grizzly temple, here you go, Virginia. Here you go. Here. This works. Do you like coffee, Miss Bartender? I love coffee. As weird as it may sound from a smoking bartender, no, I don't. Well, I get it. I'm not much. I'm not. It's not for everybody. Yo! What is up there? You cheered. Yes, that's a lot of that's a lot of cheers there. Yeah, that feels party hat worthy. Why is my why are my party hats stuck to each other? That's weird. That seems party worthy. Yeah. That's a party hat. That feels party worthy. That cat boomer the other day. What about her? Still scared of her? Still scared of her? Not really, but she looks so familiar. Stella, I think her name was. Familiar. Maybe you're mixing her up with another cat boomer. There are apparently plenty of them. Parents are just crazy these days with the genetic modifications and enhancements. No, that's not it. It's like the bandaged girl last time. Even with the ba bandages, there's just something really familiar about her. Maybe you need to stop thinking about it. Answers usually come to you when you stop stressing out. You might be right. Well, I leave you for now, bartender. Thanks for everything. Please come again. I don't think he ever comes back. There's no need for him to come back. Welcome to Valhalla! Oh, hello, Mr. Detective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And here we are, another mute person wandering about the bar. Anything I can get for you? Gut punch? Okay. He wants a gut punch. He'll get a gut punch. Gut punch. The truth is, is the truth is usually just an excuse for lack of imagination. Plain, simple, Garrick. Garrick sounds like a ma uh, Magic the Gathering character. Like a Mag Magic the Gathering ch um, commander or something. I feel like I've heard the term before. Fill that up with Karma Train. I'd love to get art drunk. I want everyone to feel the way that I do. Mixed. Gut punch. He's a Cardassian. Cardassian? Cardassian? He's a Cardassian? He Disgusting. Yeah, I believe it. Here you go. Oh, you got it right. So what's up now? A bit of holiday blues, you could say. So you celebrate Mega Christmas. Why wouldn't I? You looked more like a Festivus kind of guy. Why does everyone keep saying that? Well, Festivus is a celebration going against the capitalist madness that is Mega Christmas. Festivus, that may or may not be a reference to Seinfeld. Which I've never watched, actually, and I want to. And, you know, cheapskate. If you have something to say, say it. I'll refrain. Although, now that I think about it, Holiday Blues is not really tied to a specific celebration. It could be any holiday. Maybe you get depressed on Halloween because you can't go out and take candy from your neighbors. Just the season. A season of consumerist craze. Mega Christmas is just a mockery of what the real Christmas once was. I mean, the season has slowly become enslaved to the corporations of the time. Holiday spirit can only be manipulated so much. But then came that turbo mail guy. He started a yearly tradition of dressing up like Santa in the ring. Turbo mail? That can't be his ring name. It is. Really? Such a... Tacky name was accepted? His partner was Buster Master, and his rival was Dr. Chris Max. Tacky names were not a problem. I mean, I knew there was a wrestler that dressed as Santa every year. I also knew that the guy became insanely popular, and the stunt got out of control. And of course, that's the part everyone sings about. Hello there, Mothman. We're celebrating Mega Christmas. It's like Christmas, but mega. Santa became Nega Santa thanks to the Redmond family. Nega Santa sees the error of his ways and becomes the mighty Mega Santa, renaming the holiday Mega Christmas. And then every company jumped on the bandwagon and Christmas was Mega Christmas before anyone noticed. So you're telling me that the guy who somehow managed to rename the holiday went by the ring name Turbo Mail? Yep. Makes the whole holiday sound kind of like a joke. The whole holiday is a joke. And you're telling me you don't celebrate Festivus? <sighs> no, I don't. Do you know what kind of people celebrate Festivus? The kind that's so lame and bland that they can only talk about what they're better, how they're better because they celebrate Festivus. Like, ooh. I celebrate Festivus. I'm on a higher plane of existence than everybody else who says Christmas. That's the kind of people who celebrate Festivus. Like those jerks who only eat nuke and think they're better than everybody else. Which is what I was just saying. I see. Anything else I can get you? Get me a fringe weaver, will you? Sure. This dude wants a fringe weaver. I think that's sweet. Is that sweet? No. Is it bitter? No, is it sour? No, is it spicy? No, is it bubbly? It's bubbly. Fringe weaver, bubbly. Oh, I'm totally making this guy a double. Oh, he's getting all the alcohol. Karma train in this game is alcohol. So I'm giving him a ton of alcohol. That's one hell of a fringe weaver. Here you go! Right, thanks! So any issues with the city lately where it's the word on the street? Shouldn't I be asking that? There's nothing new, really. The lynchings of White Knights stopped, so there's that. Really? Something about the armor, I haven't gotten much on that yet. That one yet. 
All in all, the madness following the attack on the bank seemed to have settled down a little bit. That's good to that's good to hear. That's me saying that. Have any other details about the attack merge yet? Have any details emerged about the attack yet? All records of whatever happened there have been long deleted. The databases have no trace of them. Security cam, system log, everything was wiped. Whatever happened there, it's become even more of a mystery now. I wonder if Say plans on testifying. Say, a white knight, a warrior for the people. Does anyone know if Say went there in the first place? Maybe the wiping of everything actually protects her somehow. Hey, bartender, are you okay? Sorry, got distracted. There's not much to say, really. There's the odd, silly rumor here and there, like the vending machine taser malfunctioning and applying more strength, or that writer, that the writer of the last reign in the world is actually living here as a brain in a jar. But those are the kind of rumors you hear from crackheads. Crackheads might hold that one last piece of information you need, but you also hear crap like that. Note, we have served a brain in a jar before. And, yeah, we have done that. I see. Anyway, I'm leaving. Happy New Year, bartender. Please come again. Okay, then. Um, but, no. Wait, she's out. Uh, Gil, are you there? Yeah, taking a break? Let me know if someone comes in. Is this only the break? Well, alrighty then. Well, it's only a break, but I seem to have finished my cocktail already, so it seems to be time to make yet another one. So I will do that. I will head back to the game. I will take a break, quick break as I switch myself over because it's cocktail time, and I'm really excited about the next cocktail I'm going to make because it uses an ingredient that I honestly did not know was in cocktails. Oh my goodness. I'll have to put my uh, party hat back on. Because it's time for the big screen. As I plug this thing in, I have to do a little switching. I only just recently developed my little bar area, so I must apologize. I have to do that. Okie dokie. Put party hat back on. Yeah, party hat's back on. Party hat's back on. Time to camera goes malfunction. Back to swap. Outer camera, deactivate, reactivate. Wonderful, it's all set up. And I will be back in just a moment as I take a quick break. And I'll be back with another cocktail.
Alrighty, we're back with another cocktail. I think things are going well. Anna, can you confirm to me that this scene is on the big screen over there? <clears throat> yeah, you're on. Perfect, awesome. Sure. This is my, I want to say it's my final cocktail for the night, but it honestly depends on how many more days are left in Valhalla. I'm going to finish the Valhalla run tonight. But this, this drink is actually something I've been really looking forward to. So, as it turns out, there are two very popular types of fortified wines. That is port and sherry. Port named after the seaports of which it was brought in on. Sherry because of a mistranslation somewhere along the lines. And then there's Madeira. Madeira is a fortified wine made in the Madeira area of Portugal. And I remember going to the store with a really close friend of mine, the wine store, and I was like, hey, you know what I really want to try? I really want to try a nice port or sherry fortified wine. And I was like, what do you got? And he was like, well, I've got a really nice Madeira. You want to try? You want to you get one of those? And I was like, sure. Is a Madeira closer to a port? Closer to a sherry? And he was like, <laughs> no. I was like, what do you mean by no? He was like, well, it's not similar to either of them. It's completely different. And he was absolutely right about that. So miraculously, and here's another funny story. This is my 1001 book of cocktails. I did not buy this book. I found this book. I was walking um, a couple of years ago when I still had to park my car on campus, walk back to my fraternity dorm. I would pass a house that would always have shit outside of it because they were throwing away stuff literally all the time. Coincidentally, one of my frat brothers, two of my frat brothers, nay, three of my fraternity brothers moved into that place after the events with which I will about to describe to you. They were throwing out stuff and I found a cocktail book on the side of the road. Not only did I find a cocktail book, I also found a book on solar energy and whatnot, and it was like, um, okay, I guess. I took the solar panel book too, that's in my bookshelf somewhere. But I found this book on cocktails, and I was like, yo, this is perfect. I love cocktails. I love refrigerators, but I love cocktails. That's a meme. Anyway, in this book, I was looking for the wine the fortified wine cocktails, and I found one that calls for Madeira, specifically, a, uh, a wine that I didn't realize actually had any cocktails associated with, so I was really surprised to find it. Anyway, I've vamped for long enough. This is the Baltimore Eggnog. The Baltimore Eggnog calls for a couple of different ingredients, which I will describe to you henceforth, and I will put into my shaker. But before I put things in my shaker, I'm sorry, the first thing that I'll put in my shaker is... Some ice. It says shake it together with ice with a little milk. It says ice, so it's not a dry shake. It's a wet shake, if shakes can be wet. Couldn't you just so use the speak. ice on the floor? There is no ice on the floor. What are you talking about? Couldn't you leave the crust on the floor? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm crunching ice. What'd you say? Couldn't you leave the crushed ice on the floor? There's crushed ice on the floor, but the crushed ice, because of its higher surface area, melted a whole sh hell of a lot quicker. I'm putting in the small one so I can get the portions correct. Are you stick? The ice stuck to the bottom. I have no idea why they did that. Anyway, <clears throat> so the Baltimore eggnog calls for an egg. Which I'm really happy I didn't step on because I had it on the floor. Anyway, this calls for an entire egg. Please note, the risk of salmonella is real. Get yourself pasteurized eggs before making any sort of eggnog. Any sort of eggnog. Please protect yourself. That's disgusting. Good thing I have a towel. It's eggy. The next ingredient calls for a tablespoon, a teaspoon of sugar, which I have already put into this little finely, finely sized Gerber container for baby food. Don't ask why I have baby food in my partner, or my apartment. You can ask my beautiful partner, fiance, for that. She can answer. She's actually watching right now. Hi, live studio audience. Hello. Hi. Pear Gerber is fine. It tastes just like applesauce. Gerber tastes great. Pear. Okie dokie. The next ingredient I have here is three measures of Madeira. I have my Madeira wine right here. And if I may describe to you for a moment what distinguishes Madeira from port or sherry. Madeira smells like a sugary brown sugar rum. And I mean, I'm not going to taste it right now. I mean, I, I could. Don't drink out of the bottle. 
it kind of tastes like a fig fig whiskey it tastes like vanilla from the uh from the what's the term oak casts american oak casts anyway this recipe calls for three measures of that so i'm gonna do a two ounce pour of the madeira which i'm so happy i'm actually gonna make a cocktail with i'm super excited and then one measure on the other side e I did, and it's on my phone, so who cares about it? Anyway, that's gonna get sticky. That's why I have my towel. Your egg towel? This is drink number four. What did you expect? You thought I wasn't gonna, like, spill things? I wipe off my phone. Perhaps I should put my phone in a more, less precarious location. I'll need to wash my hands after this. Yuck. Anyway, that's my Madeira, and I'm gonna seal it off, because it's very nice, and I want it to stay for a while. Preserve it with a little inner gas container. That's science, baby. After the three measure Mazira, we have one half a measure of brandy. The only thing that I have in my collection that I can even consider to be brandy is Laird's Applejack. It is distilled from apples. This is the only Applejack of its kind. And that's all. That's what I got. So, Applejack. So it's gonna taste a little apple-y. There's plenty of different types of brandy. This is an apple brandy, technically speaking. Um, there's history on Applejack. This is the only Applejack still around, according to the Google searches that I conducted. And then after that, we take half a measure of dark rum, and I have dark rum around here somewhere. It's not the overproof kind. I need to find it. Where's my dark rum? Did you lose it? No, I have the overproof over here, but that's not the right one. That's overproof. I don't want to kill myself. Where's the other dark rum? Where are you? Is it on are top you of sure it? You took it out? Goslings. It's on the couch. <laughs> Half a measure of that. I plan to. I'll sit over here and watch. I might need more dark rum after this. Half a measure of dark rum. Gallon for it. Don't worry, we can go to the new liquor store. Then, I shook the first five ingredients together with a little bit of milk. I have milk down here somewhere. Did you put the milk in it? I literally bought milk just for this purpose. Let me shake it a little bit because it's a little nasty. A little bit of milk. What is in there? Oh god, that's an egg roll. That's an egg. This is technically an eggnog. This is an eggnog. Do you like eggnog? I do love eggnog, but do I don't think I've actually had a drink which includes the eggnog. Oh, thank you, back, oh, in, thank the you. back in the fridge. <laughs> My dear is just helping me today. Anyway, to break up the yolk and literally everything else, I'm gonna give it a shake. It says shake, it says shake. I'm gonna double strain this one. If you're lucky, I will lose grip on my shaker and send it straight into my television. Let's not do that. Should that be a channel points redemption? Uh, no. Anyway, I hope that works. Where am I supposed to work in there? Let's go over there. Oh, yeah. Mm. Smells like eggs. Anyway, that gets double strained for obvious reasons. Strain into a large tumbler topped with grated nutmeg. Air milk, I have grated nutmeg. I'll put it in my glass. I have a strainer. I have another strainer. That's how we do it. This is the Baltimore eggnog. I also pour into here right now. No close up. Sorry, I'm not a professional. I'll double strain that into my the tallest glass that I have. It's eggnog, shut up. It looks like like someone took a little bit of yucky coffee and then shat on it with like a bunch of like milk. Well, I'm happy that you think so, dear, because it does not indeed smell like somebody shot uh, shat on it. No, actually. Actually, it just smells like something sweeter because it is garnished with some grated nutmeg, which I found some whole nutmegs today. Nutmegs are giant nut. Things. Do you want grated nutmeg? We have grated nutmeg. No, I'm gonna ground some fresh nutmeg, you heathen. What? Why can't we just use the nutmeg in the... Never mind. Yeah, nutmeg. You're a heathen. You're a heathen. It's not gonna work. Uh, yeah, it did. And it smells awesome, so shut your mouth. That's rude. Anyway, nutmeg doesn't like to stay in the container. It came with one of those containers where you're supposed to, like, grate it out, and, like, why would you do that? These are... They're like balls of stuff. I can't sift that out of a container. 
So what's the point? And I can't close it either. Please, please. Turn around and take your No, I'm not. You're drunk. I don't drink. I'm tipsy. Absolutely. And this is the Baltimore eggnog made with, as I will repeat once more, and I'll be, by the way, um, later on when I post this video afterwards for the backup, I'll be making sure to put like the recipes in the comments below in case you're interested in checking those out. Because honestly, I think the cocktails are the most important part of this video. Catch the highlights. The Baltimore eggnog, which uses an egg, a teaspoon of sugar, three measures of Madeira, fortified wine, half a measure of brandy, half a measure of dark rum, milk, ice, and grated nutmeg to garnish. That is my drink over here. This is drink number four of the night. It smells like nutmeg. I've never smelled nutmeg before tonight, so... Yes, you have. I've used it. Ooh, have you really? Yes. It's got a nice little froth on the top. It tastes, it tastes like Madeira, mostly. Madeira, it's got that... It's figgy. It's calm with the milk. It tastes like fig... If I had to describe it, it tastes like fig cream with... What else is in there? Brandy? There's a little bit of, like, effervescence, like, an air to the mouth from the brandy because of the alcohol content of that. That as well as the rum as well. To be perfectly honest, I don't really taste the rum a lot in there. It kind of gets mellowed out. So, I think, but, I mean, mostly it tastes like Madeira. There's six measures of Madeira in there. Of course it tastes like Madeira. And like I said before, Madeira smells like rum. It tastes like fig and whiskey. Whiskey, and what I mean by whiskey is it tastes like it's been fermented in an oak barrel. Oak barrel meaning it's going to taste a little bit like clove, maybe a little taste like vanilla, something almost Christmassy like that. And it goes really, really well with the milk combination. And, uh, yeah. I like it. It's milky. What else is in there? I can definitely taste the egg. The egg is distinct. The yolk, if you're not into eggnog, would not recommend. Anyway, and that's all my cocktails that I prepared for the evening. Um, depending on what happens afterwards, it may warrant another one, but we'll see. But until then, I think it's actually back to Valhalla time. So I'm going to move myself back over to the other side. My dearest will help me because she's apparently not working on anything right now. Yeah, that's done for tonight. She's, she's tired. done. Wonderful. Her brain fried. Put my thing over here. Put my thing over there. The mic's going off for a moment so I can switch it. Excuse me, y'all. Well, like a well-oiled machine. That got done pretty well, pretty quickly. I'm getting better at this. Getting better at the switchy thing. Soon, I won't have to switch at all. Yeah, we can get more pork. Back to the live screen. I have to reset my camera once again. I don't know why it keeps making me doing that. Anyway, we're back live with the Vigi game. This time, with a cocktail. And I'm super happy I got to indulge in more of this Madeira. I actually tried... The first time I tried my Madeira wine, I've had it for a little while now, it's just been kind of sitting around. The first time I actually tried it was a about a couple days ago, over the weekend, and I was like, wow, this is unlike anything I've ever tried before. This is amazing. I really liked it. It's something I've never tried. Things will do like to you. Anyway. It's Valhalla time, and continuing back with the the latter part of the evening things are pretty quiet outside jukebox whatever jill it's kim from the augmented eye ah miss kim just call me kim sounds weird to be called miss you seem to be in a good mood got some money on mega christmas wouldn't you be happy i guess what can i get you have a beer okay girl wants a beer here's a beer here's a beer for you quick clap there beer here thanks so how have you been doing 
Pretty good, actually. My hair stopped falling out. My appetite is coming back. I hadn't realized just how much the newspaper was weighing on me until I quit. I suddenly stopped feeling defeated. I actually felt like I achieved victory. Like, like I got a hold of my own life. So nice to hear. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll start bar tra bartender training in January, too. Whoa, wow, really? Yeah, I did some research, and it sounded cool. BTC gives you many benefits, so many benefits. It sounds like a good thing to do for the time being. I don't know it's it's what I want to do for the rest of my life, but it's a good start. It'll give me time to think on the next course of action. A bit of advice. Don't go for BTC housing plans unless you absolutely have to. You have to sign a contract for at least five years of service with a cut in pay and tips. I was going to go for that one, but I backed down a bit at the last minute. How do you back down a bit? Well, I took the chance when the BTC found me an apartment. And instead of signing the BTC contract, I just asked for a regular one. I still have no idea how I got away with that one. I thought those apartments were built by them or something. Back in England, they are. They have their own real estate companies. Uh, apartment complexes where they have the means to give discounted rooms to employees. But in this city, Real Realty Nua holds an unspoken real estate monopoly. So BTC can't easily offer such promises. Oh! Realty Nua is a bit weird as far as company goes. companies go. Their name has become synonymous with quality, a brand built around certain expectations. But the truth is that Realty Nua has done little to no work in the last 10 years or so. Really? I mean, when they started, they managed to sell and build upon plots of land that everyone gave up on. They became a big name as far as real estate goes. But in reality, the company itself has actually done less than you'd think over the years. Most of the time, they're crashing in, they're cashing in on their established properties or letting others work with them. I believe in the last 10 years or so, they've only started around three or four new projects. And they're all expansions of their already established ones. <laughs> you seem to know a lot about it. Nah, I've just read a lot about it over time, especially after hearing my landlord ramble about them. I think it's all par for the course for real estate companies, really. But it's true. When you hear a name so much, you expect something. I don't know. Different. But enough rambling on my side. You must be thirsty. Can I get you anything else? Let's try Sugar Rush. All right. You want Sugar Rush. We've been serving a lot of Sugar Rushes lately. You want a Sugar Rush? Here you go. Let's get you tipsy and willing to spill information. She is... Lana Smithy at the Augmented Eye. Or she is a piece of what Lana Smithy used to be at the Augmented Eye itself. So here is a big ol' sugar rush for you. Give me the deets. I want to know. Here you go. Yay! Actually, Jill, I came here today to thank you. Me? Yeah. Back when I first showed up here, I was in a really rough spot. I was shocked. I was tired. I was a total mess. I even said some really, really mean things. But you have patience with me. Not to mention you helped me cool down and your boss saved me. And I don't know, I felt like I had to tell you all that before the year ended. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thanks. But anyway, how are you doing? Last time you were a bit off. I'm better now. Thanks a lot. Glad to hear. It was weird to see you like that. I always felt like you were putting up a cool bartender act. I did? You don't? I don't. Are you sure? What you saw as a cool bartender act is what everyone else has described as being cold. I mean, cold and cool do mean the same, but nah, it, nah I don't want to try to put it back. Sorry to disillusion you 
I'm too much of a mesh to do such a thing. Can't even get my salts together. Can't even get my party hats together. Huh. Disappointed? Surprised, actually. What led me to believe... What led me to believe that you were putting on an act? And more importantly, how can I make use of it when I get assigned to a bar? I must investigate further. <laughs> Good luck with that. Say, let's try something bubbly now. Alright, let's try a bubbly drink. Something bubbly. Something bubbly, you say? I could easily give you another beer, but I feel like you want something more. Like frothy water. I don't know. Take it. Yum. Aged. Give it a mix. There you go. Frothy water. It's, it's a beer, but like... Disgusting? Here. Thanks. Hey, Jill. I'm gonna need some ice. Ah, uh, boss. Boss? Oh, I know you. Thank you, thank you. Hey, nice to see you're fine. I'm more than fine. I'm alive. I'm here. I avoided my biggest mistake in life thanks to your timely intervention. I don't know what came over me. I just felt like, like everything was shouting. I couldn't stop the shouting, so I just felt like, like, thank you. Don't even mention it. I just did what I felt was right. Jill, ice please. Right. Are you alright? Did you seek help? I know a couple of people that could help you. Don't worry. I'm perfectly fine. I've gone to a therapist a couple of times, but he says I'm okay. I just... Something overcame me. I just don't know. I, I don't know what to say. You already said thank you, seeing that you're fine is more than enough for me. <laughs> I should have come to thank you earlier, I owed you that at least. Don't worry, just go out and be happy. You have a second chance, so use it as best as you can. I will. I'll be leaving. Happy New Year, Jill. Thank you again. Please come again. So, a uh, couple of weeks ago... I read some news about a woman saving a suicidal girl, catching her mid-air. Would you know something about that, boss? Maybe. Maybe not. Whoever it was probably just did it because it was the right thing to do. Feeling lonely? That voice. Hey, Joe, long time no see. Really long time no see. Act seriously, it feels like it's been over a year since I last saw you. I was planning on visiting you last week, but things were pretty heavy back then. So I just waited in the background until the tension wore off a little bit. Um, Earth to Joe, I'm talking to you here. If I ignore her, she'll leave. If I just ignore her, I think she'll leave. I'm not an unfathomable sense of dread. You can chance just ignore me, you know. Oh, God. Mm. Julianne Stingray, I'm talking to you. <sighs> All right. Calm down. Don't fall for her taunts. It's just the AI demons inside of my head. Telling me that there's a ghost in front of me. There's no ghost in front of me. There's no ghost in front of me. How did she know my full name, though? She has access to the machines. Of course she has access to the machines. I thought your f full name was Julianne Natalie Stingray, or did you legally remove the n n natalie Never mind that. Is she reading my thoughts? Yeah, I mean, they're kind of written in the m m m middle of the screen. Hard not to see them, actually. All right, that's it. I'm going crazy. That's such a self-centered way to see the world. You assume that you're a c crazy because you can't accept that this world c could be clearer than you think. This world is amazing because of the th things you just can't ex explain. And just because only you experience something doesn't mean it's a l lie or that you're going c c crazy. I mean, just look at, at ASMR. No, 
I'm pretty sure that's what a crazy person would say in this scenario. You acknowledge me! Shit. That's good. I want... I'm not serving you anything. But what? Why? Last time you came, I had to clean the drinks I served you off of the floor. Don't be like that. The drinks were also paid for with my money. I don't know how you did it, but that set and any uh, and but that set any and all plans I had for the rest of the week off balance. You're really freaking me out. I was gonna buy some curry with the money I had to put up for those drinks. Dog duty done. I knew we have slow days, but for God's sake. You okay? You look angry. I'm fine. Good job out there. I'm back! Oh, boss, what happened? Meeting cut short. At least I drank the has, 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 has The bottles. The bottles. I drank the bottles. Are you okay? You look distraught. I'm fine. Meanwhile, Anna in the background is just like... What the fuck's going on? You don't acknowledge me? So they really can't see you. I mean, you... You're right in front of them. And you're wearing jeans under a skirt. Why? Just why? Why would you do that? What a fashion statement. To an annoy people, of course. Is that a new trend? What does she think she's doing? Everyone feels like it's not quite right. Everyone th thinks they should call you out. But they can't bring themselves to do it because it's not that wrong. There are things like spats after all. I just uncannily right. Not all that's wrong. And they can't stop staring. Not like anyone other than me could see it, though. They could see it if they want to. Jill, you're making an awful lot of faces there. Are you okay? Yeah, just... I don't know. Just, just remembering stuff. Man, I miss not being crazy. Boss, I'm leaving early today. And you stay here! Who stays where? Crap, did I just... You have to be the first p person I've met who mixes their inner and outer voice. I... I... I'm... Um, I thought I saw one of the dogs in the counter. I'm so, so sorry about that. Oh, okay. Can I leave a bit earlier today? Sure, thanks for taking care of the fort. What about me? You haven't left yet. I'll thank you when you leave. It's not what I... Whatever. Results. Total earnings for the night. $32,470. Drinks total. 1690 Mistakes none. Commission 30%. Today's payment $507. Tips 350 Flawless service bonus 500 You're something in case you feel lonely today. $300. Today's total transfer $1,657. Total funds $3,119. Click to continue. Rent is due on the 30th. Please make sure your account has the necessary $10,000 or you'll be evicted. Just just watch Night of the ID Snatchers. Buying a poster of it will prevent her from getting too distracted. Time to buy. Jill says, there are cats in heat outside. Four says, oh, I'll have blue balls if I still had any. Because four has been castrated. Night of the whatever poster. I have to gra grab one of those. Movie poster. None of the ID snatchers. Perfect. It's mine now. Now I'm not distracted. Jill managed to get Gabby off her mind, even if just for a little bit. Let's see what the news has to say. Yori, Yori, new season. Oh, boy. Yori, Yori, new season. It's finally here. I can't believe I'm alive for this day. Thank you, blessed based. God, all the boards reporting! What are the boards, you idiot? Nice! More stupid mew blobs. 
YY gets new season, but the actual best YY is still up in the air. My internet service gets cut off tomorrow because I can't afford it anymore. Wake me up! Get a job, you stupid meat. Oh god, here we go. Prepare hot cocoa, sit in the comfy couch, put on my favorite mega crisp shredder, see snow's falling outside, turn on the heater, get my blanket, watch glorious YY and fall asleep when it comes. I am comfy. I wish I was as comfy. Have work tomorrow. Enjoy the yurus from me. Danger you. The study's closed. Wow, sounds cute. Jill. <laughs> nerds, maybe. Fucking nerds. The augmented eye has new... New articles. This just in. Tale of the Brain, Tired of Name Change Requests by Lana Smithy. A couple of weeks ago, we wrote about Taylor, one of the brains from the Sola Adam project. One of the highlights from the interview that was unfortunately stripped from the finished version was a straight comment about how many people asked Taylor to change their name to Brian on a regular basis. I know people try to treat to be funny, but I won't change my name for a punchline. Taylor told the AE team, I like the name Taylor. There's nothing wrong with the brain. I, I just won't be a part of the joke. My life is worth more than that. Taylor is... Whoops. I clicked the wrong button. Taylor is currently looking at their chances of becoming a senator in the upcoming electoral election season. Jill says, Taylor, that's the brain in the jar. We saw them previously. This just in. Parliament discusses anime influence by Lana Smithy. During an unusual meeting held at Parliament today, delegates discussed the effects of anime on the population. It's nothing but filth. Trash! A representative for the Workers' Party yelled during the meeting, If I could choke every single writer and animator out there, I'd do it. I'd choke them with my own enhanced hands. Several anime studio heads have responded to the news. I think they would, they would ban it if it wasn't bringing so much money into the local market. Yamake, a producer, told the Augmented Eye during a phone interview, I do agree that anime is trash, but I'll save the, gen the genre. You can trust me. Jill says, oh yes, important topics and all. Biker gang arrested during vandalism during protests. After vandalism during protests by Lana Smithy. The members of one of the largest biker gangs in the Motor City sector were arrested after the group's leader and her entourage were found at the site of the protest last Friday. Their leader, commonly known in the streets as Christine Love, declared to the press that they were unjustly arrested and that her gang was only there to defend protesters from the White Knights. They're afraid of us. They know they can't take us down in the streets, so they used protesters as a shield. We had no option but to surrender. Love told Ed Augmented Eye during a phone inter conversation. They're currently detained and waiting for trial. The formal charges are unknown so far. Wow, isn't she the game developer? She's many things, says Jill N4 in response. I will do one more night for the nights because I don't have any more cocktails planned, so I have to leave it up with this Baltimore eggnog. But we will take a save, take a save, number six. There we go. And see if that doesn't not end things for the evening. Go to work. It seems that there's actually more to be found in this, aside from the true ending, which I got the first time that I played the game. Good evening. Hey, Jill, let's have a New Year's party this Saturday. Isn't that a bit soon? Why? Did someone famous get killed at a New Year's party? Or maybe I didn't have more than last time. Perhaps instead I actually overwrote the slots that had the saves in it. We'll see. Why? Did someone get famous at the news party? No, I mean, like, uh, never mind. Sure, I'm in for it. Great! And Gil? He's coming too. I mean, it's not like he has anything else to do. Hey. No, I mean, like, where is he? If he's escorting Klein of his to the station, he should be back any second now. Back. See? So, you coming to New Year's party too, Gil? Not like I have anything else to do, so... I told you! We are depressing people. Oh, yeah. The kid from the other day, uh, Gabby, I think you called her, asked me to give you this. I believe it's a note. A note? Gabby. Let's see. First of all, I wanted to apologize for my behavior before. I'm still hurt by my sister's death, and it wasn't fair to take out all the stress on you, let alone put the blame on you. And so it feels weird to ask this of you after how I treated you, but I really want to talk to you. I want to catch up, to ch chat for a while, I to do what you were doing with me before I lashed out. 
I want to understand this freedom you talked about. The fear that drove you to a fight with my sister. I'll go back to the bar on the 31st. I won't take much of your time. If you don't want to see me after all that, I'll understand. But please, I really want to talk to you. Signed, Gabby. That's the younger sister of main character's ex-girlfriend who just died from nanomachine rejection. Ouch. Wow, that girl has a big vocabulary. She was always a smart one. The 31st is written in different handwriting. Oh yeah, she asked me when would you be here, when you would be here uh, relatively free, so I told her about the party. I also assumed you'd say yes to the party, which might have not have been the best idea now that I think about it. Hmm. Yeah, the boss, I'm having second thoughts about coming to the party. What? Why? Be because I don't want to face Gabby again. <sighs> now it's coming back to me. You, What drove me to never go back and apologize to her for all these years? Fear and shame. Shame because I know I made a hideously stupid mistake and it's painful to face your mistakes. And fear of what they might say. With Lenore, we never broke up formally, so I was always afraid that if we were to meet again, she'd break up with me. And I don't want Gabby to tell me that she hates me to my face. Lenore is in the right to break up with me, and Gabby is in the right to hate me. But I don't want her to. Maybe if I never see her again, she'll never tell me that, and... Chill, you idiot! What? I... You're thinking backwards. Didn't the letter say she wanted to understand you? If you bail out on this, she will hate you. Not only that, but you're getting a new chance here. Do you want to live the rest of your life running from another memory? Didn't you just see they say to Armitage that you hated feeling like that? Armitage? Titty Hacker. Alma. Right. I don't know what happened when you fought with that girl's sister. But now you have a chance to make amends. And not only that, you have us watching your back. So I want you to think about this. One day of fear or a lifetime filled with regret. Which one do you pick? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're right. I hated feeling like that. I won't run away this time. Good, because I would have gone to your apartment and dragged you out there, out of there if need be. Whoops. Hey, boss. Thanks. That's what friends are for. Yeah. Anyways, let's start the day. Jukebox time. And then at jukebox time, I will take a really quick break to vent out these cocktails and fill up on water. Water is important. Stay safe, kiddos.
and we're back to it in the home stretch. Let's get a move on. Time to mix drinks and change drinks and lives and drinks and mixing and anyway. Seriously though, it's the second note that has stirred such feelings in me. Second one. Two weeks ago, I got another note in the mail. This one is from the Lenore. Was that the envelope you took away from me in a panic? Yep. You haven't opened it? Why don't I open with Gabby? You're facing one fear, might as well face the other. Maybe. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Don't push her, Chief. I'm not. I just know she's capable of doing all that. I'll go secure stuff for the party. Call me if you need anything. Keep it up, Jill. Thanks. Oof. Happy holidays! Someone's happy. We have a party for the staff and their children. You should have seen the faces of those kids receiving gifts. Nabbing that Santa suit at the last minute the other day was totally worth it. Santa dresses seem to have been popular this year. I heard they were sold out in most places. There was this, there was this weird shortage of Santa suits, but luck was on my side this year. <clears throat> Sorry for that outburst. Why? You look so happy. I feel happy too. You shouldn't hide your happiness. Um. Anyways, can you get me a cobalt velvet, please? Sure. A cobalt velvet will get you a cobalt velvet. Easy cobalt velvet. Two aldehyde and the flanner guy, which is not that. Three and karma tree. Get that on the rocks and give it a mix. There's a cobalt velvet. There you go. Here you go, pal. Here you go. Here. Thanks. Are you meeting with Say today? She should be here in a bit. She told me she wanted a drink here, and since I was coming here too. Sadly, I can't stay for long. I have some errands to run. How has she been lately? She's better. Her wounds have been healing really nicely. If only she stopped scratching at her bandages so often. What about her eye? Eye? Uh, oh, uh, hers. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> took longer to heal, but as long as it's kept clean, there should be no problem. But to be honest, I'm more worried about her emotional wounds. She doesn't show it, but she's had depressive bouts from time to time. And who can blame her? Her life changed completely. The, do the job she loved no longer exists. She used she was used as a disposable pawn in the whole bank affair. And I'm afraid it will all make her go back to her old ways. Old ways? There was a rough spot when Say was a teen... Her mom's clinic was about to close, then her biological father, who was an asshole, showed up. And the teachers at her school didn't help. Say is not a slow learner by any means, but her way of learning stuff is different. She needs equivalences to things she knows. You need to get a bit in her mindset. Once you get this, she's a fast learner, but schools don't have that kind of patience. They basically branded her a failure. She even dropped out. I would have suggested a special course somewhere else, but that would have offended her. She's always been against being labeled as special or different. Anyway, Say was totally different during that period. <laughs> Foulmouth, she refused. Always frowning. The total opposite of how she is nowadays. From time to time, I see that old look cross her face. It scares me. You're comparing her to her teen self, though. People mature. Maybe she'll show signs from time to time, but I bet Say knows better than to go back to that. I hope so. Give me something cold and sweet, will ya? Sure. Cold. Sweet. Sweet. Cold? Nah, that doesn't have any ice. Sweet. Moonblast. Got the rocks and blended. Yeah. Oh, I made it for you. 
get some of that. Not the Bronson Entra extract, Flanner Guide, and Comotrine. Put that on the rocks. Give it a blend. A shake a shake a shake a. Give it a little bit of a shake there. And that's my drink. It's the Moon Blast. Here. Thanks. This is the kind of stuff Say asks for, you know? Now that you mention it. So, I take it Say's family situation isn't exactly fine and dandy, huh? It's a mess they've tried to fix over time, and I'm glad to say they've actually done it. Say's mom had a really abusive relationship with Say's biological father. Sadly, like many women in that situation, she just tried to justify his actions. But apparently, things got nasty when Say's mom, Miss Emmy, got pregnant. Um, at that point, she had an epiphany, one could say. She didn't want that guy to raise her child, so she finally sought help. Things weren't so easy, though. Before the authorities could take him away, Miss Emmy got a serious beating from them. Uh, she still uses a cane to walk. Thanks to that. She moved here. Say was born. She started her veterinary clinic. So he came back. Did he come back? He was drunk. Couldn't find any drugs, so he made it to the city. He caused a ruckus for a couple of days until Say managed to scare him off. How? She beat him to near death. Three times. <laughs> nice. Sorry, I, I shouldn't laugh, but... Oh, don't worry, I'll have to. The dramatic irony here is delicious. I've been wondering, can you really be so calm in the lower parts of the city? Hmm? I mean, the streets are not exactly safe, per se, and a cat boomer is sure to become a target. Well, I have my security staff with me at all times, so there's no problem. Besides, this part of the city is comfier. Come again? Sure. Uptown is cleaner, maybe more secure, but it's also too pff, sterile. Around here, you can actually feel the warmth of the people. You feel their people living. I especially like going to a busy food stand. I feel a warmth there that Uptown just doesn't have. It's also easier to talk to people. You finally came. Welcome. If you try to talk to someone in the upper part of the city, they either shrug you off or flat out ignore you. People around here are a bit more wary, and they're also like more likely to talk to you. Not that things are out nice there, though. Can I get you something? I feel like having a beer. Make that too. But I just want one. I'm asking one for me, adding one to your order. Oh, that's right. Two beers for the girls. One. One, two. One. One, two. One, two, three, four. Give it a mix. There's a beer. Slot two. One. One, two. One. One, two. One, two, three, four. Give it a mix. That's two beers for the ladies. In record time. Here. Thank you. Thanks. Say, you should have seen the kids after you left. They were all playing with the toys you picked. You nailed it again this year. They were all asking, where's Say? Where's Say? Why do they call you just Say when they call me Auntie Stella? I don't look that old. <laughs> don't worry. They still like you. Sorry I had to leave, but Mom worked overtime that night, and I couldn't leave her alone. What happened? Oh, there were fireworks. Some dog thought it'd be safe to hide in a jar. The little guy managed to get his head and a paw inside before getting stuck. And it was plastic, so they could just try to break it. That's messy. She needed someone to hold the dog while she worked. Poor fellow was scared. Well, I'm out. Oh, yeah. We'll have a New Year's party this Saturday if you want to come. Sure. It's better than depressing myself with my dad's woes about the next fiscal year. Hmm. 
I'll be here. Bye, Jill. Bye, Say. Careful. Please come again. You want to come too? I'd love to. I'll also make up for not coming last time. How was the party? Pretty nice. We played Truth or Dare. Had some fun. Broke some glasses. Ate lots and lots of food. <laughs> Seriously, looking back, <laughs> the amount of food was ridiculous compared to the number of people who were th <laughs> there. I apologize for my hiccups. Better leftovers than left hanging, don't you think? Yeah. Can I get you something? Let's try something classy. Okay. Classy. Perhaps something like a Brantini. Like another mutual friend so enjoys. Age to give it a mix. Brantini. There you go. Something classy. Yep. This is the thing. Stella came in quite cheery about Sunday. This is this Sunday? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, her birthday is actually the 25th. Really? There's a weird story for when she was a kid. She heard Mega Santa's story, and somehow she got it into her head that by being born on the 25th, she was the spiritual reincarnation of the original Santa. That made her start giving out gifts like crazy. She got over it, but the gifting stuck to her. Spiritual reincarnation? Well, the story says that the Redmond family destroyed Santa's spirit. And that Mega Santa was reborn as a manifestation of the Christmas spirit. She thought she was the old Santa spirit in a new body. <laughs> that girl was delusional as a kid. Huh. Speaking of things you did when you were young, Stella mentioned she's worried about you going back to your old ways. Something about a rough period where you were angry or something? Oh, that. It's sweet that she's worried. But I won't go back to those days just like that, though. Even if I face the same situation, I'm more mature, you know? I'm not a teen anymore. Expected as much. Told her as much. Hey, can you get me something bubbly? Sure. You want bubbly? We'll get you bubbly. Get you a nice bubbly. Type. No, it's flavor. Bubbly is apparently a flavor. I didn't know. You want a beer? Take a beer. Take a big old beer. That's pretty bubbly. It's pretty bubbly. It's a big old beer. Here you go. Hmm. Bubbly, bubbly. Hey, Jill. This might seem a bit random, but... Do you remember the first time I came here? Yeah, you're the second white knight I've served. I remember why. Precisely because of that. I've been meaning to ask you about that story. How was your other experience with a white knight? If I had to put it simply, the total opposite of you. Oh. She came here as part of her work, looking for information on some case. And I went through the motions, offering her a drink and all that, but she came only for her job. At first I thought she was just another private eye, but she showed me her badge and all, and... Whew. What kind of case was it? Mm, I really wouldn't know. She never told me, but she asked if I saw some people. She got pretty intense when I told her that I had no idea what she was talking about. I suggested she ask the vending machines outside, and they told her the suspect climbed on them. She got her info, and she left. Pretty professional. If a bit intimidating she seemed personally invested in the case though the way she lost her cool was suspicious you seem to be pretty good at reading people jill it makes me kind of jealous no nah, i'm not good at that it's just a coincidence that i noticed it but you noticed it 
not good at reading people. Even if the cue was thrown in my face, I wouldn't be able to see it. I'm sure you can compensate with another skill. Any particular reason you ask me about that event? Not really. Just found the fact that I was the only other white knight you've served. Weird. Meatball Girl asks, if I asked for something fizzy, what you, would you make? Literally anything with champagne in it. Champagne is naturally carbonated, and that's honestly the first thing that I could think of. Um, a Kir Royale, for example, which I want to say is creme de cassis. Creme de cassis, I believe, is... I don't know what fruit that is, but I believe creme de cassis and champagne... Maybe something else. Make a Kir Royale. That's bubbly. It's champagne. That's what I would say would be fizzy slash bubbly. Anything other fizzy? Some beers are pretty fizzy. So maybe I'd serve one of those. I mean... Really? Just two? Weird. I know. I've spent most of my life with almost no interactions with white knights until I met you. It means you have a... You've had a nice life then. That sounded creepier than I thought. A bit. Yeah, just a little bit creepy. Well, I'm done for today. Thanks, Jill. Please come again. I'm gonna take my break, Gil. Sure. Did I not already take a break? I feel like I took a break already. Can't remember. Give it a save. End of the night. Give it a save. Move on. <sighs> End of the cocktail night. That'll be it for tonight. Because it's almost 12 o'clock. Honestly, not the latest that I've been going. A little tipsy right now. I need time to be able to drink some more water. I need to sober up a bit. I do have... Let's see. Tomorrow's Thursday... I was going to say, I have class in the morning. I do, but not in the morning. Early afternoon, 12.30ish, not too bad. I would have left food for four. Jukebox doesn't need to be changed. Okay, I'm here. Um, Dorothy? You won't get through the bar anytime soon. You can stop walking. Honey, you want something? The usual, I guess. Usual, y y uh, y y usual. I honestly can't remember what she has as usual. I'm gonna go with a blue fairy and be done with it because I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember what's right and what's wrong. Aged, mixed, blue fairy. Did I get it? Here you go. Okay, you're freaking me out. What's up with you? Hey, honey. You know what's real? How so? I mean, how do you know if what you see is an actual thing? How can you tell if what you see around you is actually happening? What tells you everything is not actually a fabrication? What tells me I'm not just a simulation in a computer? And those ponderings brought you to the bar. What? Oh, Ty, I'm in the bar. Am I? Dorothy. You're having a solipsistic crisis of sorts? Solip what? Solipsism. The theory that the self is the only thing that can be known to exist. See, that's another thing right there. That word. Solipsism. What does it even mean? Where the hell did it come from? Well, solus means alone, and ipsy means self. Yes, but how did it come to be? You expect me to believe that a lot of people just randomly decided to make noises? And decide, hey... 
let's make this noise mean this. Doesn't really make sense. Words don't make sense. I've been repeating words for a long time and they've stopped making sense. Why? Calm down, that's just semantic satiation. Stop making words up, honey. And then there's this counter. How can they be sure the counter is really here? <coughs> <coughs> Swallow my water the wrong, wrong way. It is. Please stop tapping it. Hold on. Just making sure. Oh, I should really get this chicken a drink. Something to uh, throw at her. Perhaps some frothy water. Shh. Here's some frothy water for ya. Yeah, this chick needs, needs a hug. Stop down the counter so much. I'm this close to throwing this at your face. It's frothy water. You need a hug. Do you need a hug? Sorry. So let's start from the beginning. Since when did you have this existential crisis? Since earlier today, I think. But I don't know. It was all too sudden. I was thinking about everything that happened from a week ago until now, and how much fun I was having, how much I loved everyone around me, and, and out of nowhere, the thoughts started piling up in my mind. What is love? What is fun? Are those feelings really real? Is all of that real? Am I real? What tells me I'm actually in a body? What if I'm just some computer somewhere thinking it has a body? What if I'm just a human, a human girl in a comatose dream? What tells me that you're real? What tells me that any of this is real? Uh, for all I know, I might just be a figment of somebody's imagination. With that said, or even just an AI simulation in some computer that thinks it's human. I've been there, Thorothy. That existential doubt and crisis, that uncertainty about whether or not things are real. It was a couple of months only, but I remember having panic attacks and scratching my arm to feel something. But the panic attacks gave me a rush of adrenaline so I couldn't feel the scratch and the fear got worse. What did you do to get over it? Oddly enough, I read a book. The Last Rain in the World, one of my favorites, and I believe that was written by a brain not named Brian, a brain named Taylor. At one point, I cried with the book and I realized I was crying over fake things. A story, it's characters. I didn't care less for them because they were fake. Why not think of reality like that too? Even if I'm a figment of someone's imagination, I still care about you. That's what I told myself, at least I it wasn't immediate it wasn't immediate, but that focus helped me. Huh. I like it. Hey, can I take this drink? I made it for you. Thanks. Okay, then. Whoosh. Why did you... Th th wh why'd you throw it on your head? To feel something you made. And? It burns. It itches a bit. I'll get you a towel. Delivery for Dana Z Oh, I've been here before. Mr. Mario, welcome back. I have a delivery for Dana Zane. Who's that? She's my boss. I'll get it to her. Right. Sign here, please. It's a big package. I wonder what's inside. You should open it. If it's something perishable, it'll need to be refrigerated. Let's see. It's... A wiener? 
a really big wiener. Hey, honey. Hmm. The big package had a big wiener inside. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what will your boss do with uh, such a thing? I don't know. She'll cook it. Perhaps she'll chop it. Honey. Seems the wiener is too big to eat correctly. <laughs> Stop. Maybe, maybe you could prepare some right now. What do you say, honey? Do you want some of your boss's wiener? I, I, I do, I do, I don't, I don't want, I don't. Seriously, Jill. She's the, she's making jokes over here. She's talking about a wiener. Like, this is so funny about a wiener. It's wieners, wieners, wieners. And you're the one trying not to laugh too hard at them. Anyway, we all know <laughs> if we dare cook this without her permission, she'll hang us upside down. She'll hang me upside down. <laughs> hey, Jagged Boy, what's your name? I'm Mario. Come on, Mario, I'll buy you a drink. Hmm. Might have another delivery, you know. T this is the last one, actually. I'll accept your offer. I'll have, um... Sunshine, um, sorry, what? I think you said Sunshine Cloud. D did not. Mars Blast. Hmm. And you? I'm fine. I'm fine. He wants a Sunshine Cloud. He's a little insecure. We're giving him a Sunshine Cloud. He wants a Sunshine Cloud. He's getting a Sunshine Cloud. He wants a little quote unquote girly drink. That's what he's gonna get. He gets a little quote unquote girly drink. You can have any kind of drink you want. Who cares if it's quote unquote girly? Do you like it? Do you enjoy it? That's fine then. If what you like is in the glass, that's the right drink to make. Stop. Sunshine Club. There you go, pal. Here. Ah, uh, th this is not what I. It totally is. Hey, um. Hmm. Call me Dorothy. You can also call me Darling for the right amount. Yeah, yeah, Dorothy. Why'd you buy me a drink? Uh, just, just to let you know, I don't, I don't swing that way. What way, Lilla? I'm a man's man. I, I like, I like men. Okay. Not that there's anything wrong with liking women, but oh, don't worry. I wasn't hitting on you. I was just thanking you. Thanking me? Your package, let me see, honey here. Laughing like an absolute idiot. It's easier than you think. <laughs> that made me happy, and I don't know. If it was what she was telling me earlier. I'm more calm than when I entered. I'm glad to help, I think. I guess, maybe. Duty calls. Bye, Mario. Bye, John. Bye, honey. Enjoy your <laughs> big wiener. Out with you. <laughs> she seems like a nice girl. I don't mean for it to sound like I... I get it. I get it. Don't worry. They're like guys. It's perfectly clear. And that's okay. Speaking of, you like motorcycles, don't you? I do, yeah. Have you been in the Motor District? I spent all my free time in the Motor District. Actually, why? Is it true what they say about all the illegal races going on there? You're not a cop, are you? As far as I remember, no, I'm not. Hmm. Well, I mean, there are illegal races, but there's also a semi-legal league going on there. Semi-legal? The authorities acknowledge that there's races going on. They don't know what goes on in them, however. Modified engines, casualties, substance abuse. The illegal ones end up being safer in the end. Huh. 
Have you heard about a biker called Christine Love? Miss Love, of course, everyone knows who she is. What about her? Is her gang as dangerous as they say? I don't know. Nobody really knows. Excuse me? They look intimidating enough, but truth is that nobody has faced them directly. Moreover, nobody wants to be the one that got beaten to a pulp if they turn out to be what they seem. So her gang is just... There! Menacingly. Doing your own things. Not bothering anybody. Oh. You want anything else? I'll have the piano man. Alright. Give us a song, you're the piano man. For Mario. Mario wants a piano man, which I fucked up on the first time. That's totally okay. Everybody makes mistakes. It's a pretty big old drink. Give it a rocks. Give it a mix. There we go. Piano man. Here you go. Hey, this is nice. This will sound weird, but do you believe in Replobots? Replobots? There's the belief that some Lilum out there are designed to be perfectly, to perfectly replicate a particular human. That someone or something replaces those humans with such a Lilum. Thus they call them Replobots. You know a lot about this. I don't. It's in mag most magazines nowadays. Well, it's the first time I've heard of it. What about it? On my way here, I almost ran over my neighbor. He just showed up in the middle of the street. Uh, and I say almost because he moved really quickly out of the way. Then I went to deliver a package and somehow my neighbor was there. Almost immediately after the whole thing. And he was there the whole time. Uh, maybe with someone that looked like him? He had the same looks, clothes, mannerisms. Trust me, you know a perfect re replica when you see one. You saw that kid Lilum there. They could easily pass off as humans. There are even Lilum idol singers nowadays whose voices can pass off as human. They could be passing off as humans on our own news is replacing us little by little. At this point in time, I really doubt it. Lilum behavior is a bit different. You can easily tell someone's a Lilum because they seem... Uh, what's the... What's the word? How do I put this? They don't care about risk and danger as much as we do. They treat risks with a lot more leniency. Still, be careful. Keep an eye out for uncanny doppelgangers. I'm leaving. Thanks for everything. Please, come again. What's your take on the Replobot thing? Do you believe in him? Do you? Not really, but I asked you first. When I was in high school, I had this irrational fear of aliens. I was paranoid that they would come. What would I do then? I remember I lost lots of sleep because of it. That doesn't answer my question. Let me finish. After many months of fear, I reached a conclusion that might as well apply here. It's useless to be afraid. I'm but a simple woman. I wouldn't be able to do shit against them. So I'd rather live without being afraid. Because the memories of not being afraid will be my only solace when the nebulae crabs invade. Er, I mean, well, when the replobots come. Jill, are you still afraid of aliens? What part of it's useless to be afraid didn't you catch? Right. Back. Did anything else happen? I discovered I had the sense of a uh, humor of an eight-year-old. Did anything new happen? Hey. They brought you a package. Ah, oh, yes, my curated wiener. It's a gift for my folks. It was delayed in customs, but here it is. You guys want some of it? <laughs> huh. 
The joke is it's a giant wiener. <laughs> it's a giant wiener. That's a new one. Anyway, results. Total earnings, $35,720. Drinks total, $1,890. Mistakes, none. Commission, 30%. Today's payment, $567. Tips, 800 Flawless service, 500 Have some pocket money. I'm out of excuses for $300. And today's total transfer, $2,167. Total funds, a little over 5000 Rent is due on the 30th. Make sure your account is the necessary 10000 or you'll be an evicted. Job wonders if Maneki Nekos actually bring luck. If I want to prevent her from getting too distracted, I must purchase a Neko. Maneki Neko. I bought one. Yay! Joe bought what she wanted and she's pleased with herself. She was certainly focused at work. And that's... Pretty much what I'll be calling it for the night. Unlock this phone here. There's a couple of new updates, but I will do them next time. I'll take a save. Number six. I guess I gotta start overwriting. There we go. Day 16. This is probably what happened before. Anyway. That was... An absolute joy. I really enjoyed playing this game. It's nice. Makes me think about things. Really think about things when I'm playing this game. Makes me make some cocktails. Obviously, after, I think, next session will probably be the last session that I play of Valhalla. Unless I continue on a new game plus. And after that, I'll probably start another visual novel to which I will create cocktails too. Because I do like the excuse of making cocktails on a daily basis. It's a bit of a hobby of mine. So I'll probably go off on that. In any case, I want to thank everybody for hanging around for a little bit. It was a joy for me. I hope it was a joy for you. I made four cocktails tonight. The four cocktails that I made were, excuse me, monkey juice, um, the golden afternoon, cobra something or other, something with cobra in it, and then the Baltimore... Um, Baltimore eggnog thing or whatever. It was wonderful. Check the VOD. I'll post it later within 24 hours of now because of that new affiliate agreement. I can't post things immediately. Look at that. Let's see who else is online. I'd love to know. Let's see. Uh, let's see who else is online. Haunted the Vagabond. It seems that my Somebody who followed me before, Haunted the Vagabond, was following me before, and perhaps it's a tactic, I don't know, but you're also playing Vagab uh, you're also playing Valhalla Haunted, so I will send my viewers to you. It was an absolute joy to everybody who came along. I loved it. It's about 12 a.m., so a good morning to you all. I hope you send Haunted the proper party favors that they deserve and i'll see you next time i'll probably be streaming on monday with anna don't know what i'm playing yet but we'll see about that anyway to the raiders have a wonderful rest of your night evening afternoon morning whatever it may be let's go get haunted with a big old party yell if we can that's what i'm gonna do when i enter that's what i'll do and so we've done that and so for people following along with the vod at home Thanks so much. I'll be posting some highlights later of the actual cocktails themselves for those who are more interested in the cocktail part of it. I feel like I'd be the one interested in that. So that's what I would do, honestly. So that's what it'll be. Have a wonderful night, everybody. I hope it's enjoyable. See you next time. Bye-bye.